I'm sorry. Appreciate Can I do this? I'm sorry. It's Front and center. Welcome. This is a stream about building a stream. We have fantastic smart people. Neuro, Cats, Lydity, Vibe, Pig, Destiny, Winter, Maynard, Loco, No Regret, and Wardy. We're going to talk about people. not. Yes, everyone here is smart and two. good looking, <laughs> which is a, a double. We're going to talk about defining what your stream is about, refining that product over time, and expanding it to different types of media and different games. So without further ado, let's dive into it with the guests we have here. Defining the stream. So we've got Loco. Loco, if I can give my first impression, your superpower is time management. You're more organized than everyone else here, and we're honored that you chose to talk to us and say words. Thank you. So how would you describe your stream and your brand? If you could define yourself on Twitch. Um, I do a lot of strategy games. I try my very best to, can people hear me if I point in that direction? I feel rude if I like look away from you. Look at the camera. I, can, I, I think I should probably look over there. We know what you do. Yeah, yeah. We know you do. So they're saying it makes a big difference, so I'll stand over here. So you can talk. <laughs> sense. So I do a lot of I do a lot of StarCraft multiplayer. I do a lot of strategy games, and I've been doing so for probably about ten years at this point. I've been making video content for StarCraft in particular for many many years, and for like the last two three years, I've been doing it full time. Mm -hmm. It's been it's been really good. Yeah. Personally, I remember watching a lot of your scouting guides, ZVT scouting guides, about what to look for, when to make drones, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you were a student for the first few years of your stream, right? Yeah. When did you go full time? Um, I think this is like the third year now. Third year? Yes. Yeah. I've so been full time for about five to six. You're back I believe. To me to fuck it up. Well, like financially speaking, I couldn't like do it. Oh, oh, I'm not Financially, what? Like financially, I could probably do it earlier, but it was still a new. So mm -hmm. I just finished that off. And you stream, your, Zerg is your best, but you do random most of the time. Yeah, I do more Zerg right now because. I'm liking it a lot, but yeah. You like winning? I like winning. <laughs> and I think I like one of the, the most distinct factors for your brand is your YouTube channel is a big portion of your overall product. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think most of us, Twitch is the primary. Wardy, are you an exception to that? No. Twitch primary? Yeah. Yeah. So you do offline content. You're filming videos before you stream, mm -hmm. usually? So yeah. So usually in the morning, I make videos and after the stream. Mm -hmm. And you stream for how many hours? Six. So I stream Monday, Saturday, and uh, yeah, same for video. So I do Monday through Saturday content, and mm -hmm. Sunday I take off. Sweet. Yeah. You. Me. Yeah. yeah. Winter just gaming. Stream. The just streams a hundred hours. <laughs> <laughs> I right, same the same question. Same. Yeah. Like, like basically, how I, do you define your stream? I, I guess the the quickest like if you want a one nine or the Starcraft variety streamer because mm -hmm. I try to do all the things that people said. Well, like if, if you were looking years ago on Twitch, like you weren't seeing, like um, th there are a lot of there are hundreds of better players than me, but not hundreds of people who talk at their camera yeah. better than me, stuff like that. So I've actually now I've been full time for uh, it's going on five years now. I did a couple years of school. I ended up in uh, digital marketing, and then I just decided if why don't I just do digital marketing? Mm -hmm. So that's where I ended up with that. But over time, I've kind of built it. So I play random, which. I know it's crazy, but sometimes people want to watch all three races instead of just one, so I found that like right off the bat. But recently, in the last like year or two, I've been doing a lot more structured like guides and, and casting and stuff like that. And also, YouTube's a big part for me. Mm -hmm. um, I find a lot of people, like if they're gonna support you on Twitch, they might not, even though I am streaming, sometimes 100, like 60 plus hours of StarCraft a month, and then like other games sometimes. Mm -hmm. Even if, because I stream at night, I, I started streaming when I was going to school, but I'm going to school during the day. I grew an audience at night, went full time, so I kind of just, and I'm also apparently allergic to daylight, I, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But most, most of us are light sensitive, I would say. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. One of your uh, defining attributes, I think, is capturing the lower league market, so like bronze to gold, new players. The noobs. What got, Casuals. <laughs> what got you into that, and how does that thought process work? Like, I always, so, I, I guess I agree. My mom's an elementary school teacher, so a lot of the tactics she, she uses, I kind of had when I was growing up. She just used inadvertently on me, because mm -hmm. you kind of, so that prepared me for Twitch chat pretty well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then working from there, just uh, for streaming, I think it's important to kind of be unapologetic. If you're gonna do it full time, you can't cater to the guy who's like, pay attention to me. I need attention now every time because you're just gonna, you're gonna blow your top. Yeah. Uh, that's a nice way to put it. Um, so I just have that seething, um, low key rage as opposed to uh, having dramatic outbursts, stuff like that. But the, but the new player audience, I think I just saw that with like day nine not being as uh, dedicated to StarCraft specifically. Mm. And a lot of people like in the first year, few years of StarCraft, like I'm already doing this type of stuff, really focused on it and that paid off a lot. Awesome. <laughs> Wardy is an outlier here because you built your stream as a caster. So that's a little bit of a different route. You're not playing games as much, but you do play some games. You're a master's fan, right? Yeah. 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 I'm pro SMZ. You're no. fucking late. <laughs> so, so how does that process work, building a stream through casting? How long have you been doing it? What does that feel like? Um, so I started casting like six or seven years ago. I went full time three years ago. Um, it's very really different to stream usually because you definitely need like uh, content to then put on the content of course, right? Yeah. So I have to make sure there's always organized with stuff to be able to cast. I need to have a schedule. I need to work around players and events. So unlike these guys who stream like through the night all the time or you know you just tune on like Monday to Saturday two till eight for local stream. Mm. Big fan. Nice, nice. Um, I like where I, you said it. <laughs> you thought you was famous. Uh, <laughs> yeah I took yeah, notes. Nice. Um, but yeah I have to I have to uh, really just stream whenever the content is available. So it's kind of a challenge in itself and it's definitely not the best way to do it. Mm. It's definitely there's a lot of negatives to it and there's also that sort of sense of you're very reliant on people maybe showing up to watch the tournament and the players rather than to watch you. Mm. And so it's very difficult to then brand yourself and to like grow yeah, yourself. So it's definitely been an interesting set of challenges. Yeah, it seems like the way that you define yourself is... We're fucking serious. Again! What is this group of people? He couldn't pour the water and he knocks it over. So, we've had an accident, water, water has been spilled on the table, alert. I was busy taking notes. He, he Next took meeting, notes. no water, no cheese. He didn't get water on the notes themselves, so That's we've a saved a little bit of material yeah. here. I did that on camera. It yeah, could yeah. have been worse. That was the whole thing. It, it could have been red wine, but it's not. So, thank you. I did not want to do that. We, right, can put the, we can put the cheese on the table. This I don't know if that's, that's a good idea. Right. People have a tendency of spilling their shit. How do you spill <laughs> cheese? You can't I, I, spill I, I, cheese. How do you spill water? That's it's, called de it's not called cheese, it's designated pressure. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I did have one question for you. What is your ratio of casting between you have replays versus live games? So, actually, more recently, I did a lot more replays because I found there were certain formats I could do where, for example, if you take like a five player group that's round robin and you play two matches at a time, it gives you 10 matches in a group rather than say six if you have like a four player group. And that's really good with Legacy of the Void because I feel like if you cast like six best of threes, it can be done in like three, three and a half hours. And I tend to stream for one to stream for like four and a half to five hours. So I like that format because then I can like do five matches live and then five matches for replays or as many matches as I like for replays. It's always better cast live and I always try and cast live. I think more and more I'm realizing that people don't mind as much, and people even so don't mind so much if I cast stuff that other people have casted as well. Yeah. So that's something I've really realized recently that people do just want content. People don't necessarily see all the content all over the place. So sort of not stealing content off people, but doing stuff that other people have done as well. If then replays are available, it's very useful. Yeah, well, it's kind of similar to the, the way people play the game, where you have your unique angle of the stuff you tend to gravitate towards, so they could watch the same series casted by you versus casted by Pig, for example, and they could have a very different feel to what that series was like. That's cool. And we have Cobra. Cobra is a, a hero who I didn't know about until I was on the Pylon show. You do production for all kinds of stuff, and production is amazing. So what's your angle in streaming? So with streaming, um, primarily I'm a stream manager for most people that uh, don't know who I am. I help behind the scenes, your Twitch overlays, setting up a bot, Discord accounts, wherever you need somebody that has no clue what they want, but they want everything that other people have, and they don't know anything technical other than go live. I can help provide some services for that stuff. Recently, uh, 
Jeff and Control Robinson started um, out by himself as a streamer when he was like over G and needed somebody to help do that stream management stuff. So I was the guy who stepped in and helped with that. And then later on, he needs a StarCraft talk show that Artosis and Jeff are starting themselves and they need a producer for that. And having done some other production work for that, they tagged me for that, and I was very happy to help with something that was related to StarCraft you know, production. And uh, we've done about 24 episodes now. They're up on YouTube. They get recorded live on Twitch. I do the production on the OBS uh, machine. It goes to Twitch as a VOD. The VOD goes then to YouTube where people watch it, and then it gets brought back down, cut into MP3s, and then split out to like 10 different podcasting platforms where people can go watch it and download it the very next day. And all that's uh, vast majority of it's available for free. If you want it immediately after, uh, you can wait two hours and it'll be up on YouTube, or you can go watch the VOD on Twitch. Um, I am kind of instrumental in helping the Pylon Show have a presence everywhere it exists that people can find it. So we have our own website design, we have show notes that are always linked on the website and uh, the YouTube comments. Um, or description that has all the stuff we talk about during each pylon show. Timestamps. And the timestamps, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we range an average between 30 and 45 um, pages of those. That's a lot of content, but it's easily searchable. People can find it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, and we have a pylon live pylon show on Saturday on the mainstream of Twitch with. Uh, Grant Davies, which is a developer for Brood War, and Day9, they're going to talk about some history stuff with Jeff and Artosis, of course. Awesome. Yeah, from my personal perspective, I didn't really understand the value of good production work like you do until I was on the Pylon show, and you're in the voice call with us, and I can see you work in a way, you're doing accident prevention, where if someone has an issue during the show, you're the one who steps in, where it doesn't break the flow of what we're talking about, will we still get it fixed? and then expediting stuff that normally the broadcaster has to do, like all the YouTube stuff, the timestamps, the Reddit posts, and people get that content super fast, as opposed to Artosis and In Control needing to do that right after. It would be a lot slower, also because of energy, so. I'm on the East Coast time, so for me, the show starts at uh, eight o'clock, mm -hmm. and then we go live at about 8.45 p.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern time, and then we have a three hour on average run time. And then after that, I stay up to like 3 or 4 a.m. Eastern time, making sure all that content gets available for the European folks. As soon as they wake up, it's available for them the very next day. Mm -hmm. And then on, it rolls, of course, onto America and so on. Heckin' awesome, dude. Cats. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so is this introductions? Because I missed the... Uh, Effectively, nights. yes. The oh, what? I God. came in late. Why did you <laughs> come in late? You know we have a show at 4. You come at 4, like 5. You came when the cheese was already actually, here. Yeah, actually that's came, came in at like 3.58 or 3.59. Good luck. That's we did start, we <laughs> did start early. It was 3.58. The, the prompt is, how do you define yourself, your brand, and your place on Twitch? Okay, so I was one of the first streamers on Twitch. I was here since before Justin TV. Did you see your picture in the keynote, by the way? In the what? The keynote for TwitchCon. No, I wasn't. So when they announced it, they showed a panel of all the broadcasters who had been there since the beginning, and your icon was there. Yeah. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. How many How many were they? It was, I think, less than 200. Awesome. Yeah, um, yeah I, was, I was with Twitch since before Twitch, like since Justin TV. Um, Justin TV was a sponsor of my team uh, that was forming. StarCraft 2 was coming up, and that meant, uh, and, and Twitch was making its name through StarCraft 2 in, in great part where there was other companies working with League of Legends as both games rose with this uh, streaming broadcasting companies. Um, so I think I was pretty privileged to just be there at the start. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm a fairly creative person and so a lot of the things that I did I think were uh, new in the space. For example, um, you know, things that seem trivial now like uh, using a camera, like no men used cameras for the first while. Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple of girls that used them and I watched uh, Megumix there, and I was like, hey, like, why don't I use a camera? And then I, I put my camera on, and no guys were using cameras, and uh, I'd get insulted and shit in my chat, you know? They'd be like, yeah. 
like, what are you doing? Like, putting a camera, like, you're not beautiful. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, well, like, it's like, I don't want to see you, but, but, but it, there's, I understood there was, there, you know. It adds to the interaction. I've noticed yeah. that a lot where, more, right? as soon as something happens, a lot of times you don't need to say words. Your face does a thing that mm. connects to your the face. Person. Our your leader, face, our leader. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your face certainly does things. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so I think I think my stream rose uh, in the early days a lot due to positioning, just from being there from the start. Uh, I was uh, fairly fairly good at the game that I played, and that also boosted my um, stream. And uh, you know, I was fairly creative, so I, I think I innovated in some areas. Yeah, and I think if I can pull a few words that come to mind with your stream, reasoning and logic for the way that you talk about the game, where it's more in the neutral building blocks of how it works rather than a lot of people have the top down where you see the pro meta and then you try to emulate that and integrate it in your own play, mm -hmm. whereas you would tend to think about it from the base level of a drone. How do I stack these drones to make a plan and what are my advantages versus my opponent's advantages? Absolutely, um, and I'm not sure if we're going into talking about like what makes a stream popular or stuff like that yet. So um, we're gonna get into refining and expanding it later on, but if you have ideas, this is kind of organic, so. Okay, I mean, I think there's, some connecting thoughts there, right? Like I think that that, that has a niche, and I think that as long as people are kind of themselves and mm. like play to their strengths, um, and there are certain things like just being consistent, which I'm, for example, not. I've never been. Um, I struggle to be. I'm not a very practical person. Um, so, so I'm aware of like many weaknesses and many strengths of like different people and myself. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure that like logical thinking is widely appealing. For example. You're, you stream to a major audience of StarCraft people, and those people are semi-intellectual and wanting to think about the game, game in a deeper way, whereas a first-person shooter community might not necessarily be attracted to the same game philosophy oh, sure. discussions I mean, there's different, that, yeah. that can be found on your channel. Yeah, those, I, I think that's, uh, that's like averages almost, right? Like, sure, there's gonna be like less, uh, maybe intuitive types right. in, um, in Counter-Strike, and uh, more in StarCraft and maybe even more in a game like Hearthstone that requires no mechanics or anything like that. <laughs> but like, I, I'm not saying Hearthstone. Whoa, Blizzard Spot endorses this Why? No, I'm, just, I'm saying Hearthstone players are smarter. They're oh, smarter. Okay. Yeah, they're, oh, like, yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's, well, it's, it's, it's a compliment. It's a compliment. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, no, you it's, can compare it to poker right. as well, where poker, chess, and Hearthstone all have trivially easy mechanics, mm -hmm. but the mechanics of StarCraft add depth that those games don't have, sure, and they, vice versa. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I think on average, if there's like an area that's lacking, then you have to compensate in the other area harder if you want to be competitive, right? So like right. in the case of Hearthstone, like you just play with your brain, basically. And yeah. So, you know, Hearthstone, the fucking Hearthstone, like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for the, all the swearing. But <laughs> the, the, the Hearthstone, uh, like top, the top of the, the, the top players are like, oh, brilliant, you know, like yeah. talk to those kids and they're like, uh, yeah, they're like scary. Toast has <laughs> managed to win one, so I don't know. I mean, that was before Hearthstone was a thing, and, yeah, yeah. and he misplayed and like, I know, I know. missed lethal options. <laughs> <laughs> or was it Crypt that missed lethal? Oh, someone missed lethal, someone yeah. missed lethal yeah. in the... In I'm the not quite sure. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, think that's a good one. It's a joke of water on your phone. Like a Hearthstone player would never... A phone can be a booster. A phone can be a booster. That's like someone who's never made a head ever And we have no regret. Welcome. Does what is your think? story? What do you think my story is out of curiosity? I think that you are a streamer who started as a pro player. You are a specialist in, uh, in a variety of ways. One of the most notable is your strength on the front foot. You see here, these, are his, these are his builds. <laughs> We've converted these into a food yeah. form. So there's a lot of discussion <laughs> that people make about whether Zerg is defensive or offensive, and you're basically an offensive expert in StarCraft, which is really cool. You basically find those windows where Zerg can be successful, press an opening, and you've been in GSL Code S. Once, twice, 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 there you go. And you also stream on the side. But one thing yeah. that maybe not everyone knows is you do a big part with the team house in Korea, and you also right. pull a bunch of people onto streams who would not have been on streams, which I feel like is a, a huge factor in building content for the team. 
Yeah, and he's splitting the stain this room. This guy's just, just I, I wins mean, everywhere. I, I don't think of myself much as a streamer, to be honest. I don't really grow my personal brand as a streamer, but it, I do put a lot of time into Scarlet's channel and all that content we do on her channel and the YouTube stuff that I do is pretty like involved. Like I'm really involved with that stuff, but it doesn't really grow my brand as a thing. Mm -hmm. Like the thing that grows my brand the most is my GSL commentary. KSL, ASL, mm. and the team house, but not my Twitch channel. And you helped with the signature series, right? Yes. Yeah. But I didn't help with production, more like allowing them to come to our house and like do stuff with them. You opened the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really do much. Sweet. <clears throat> I think we can hit the questions pretty soon. Let me go check the the notes and the viewers and all this. I know Destiny will also be remoting in here through the laptop. Through the laptop? With him. Destiny's gonna, oh, he's gonna show up he's on the He's gonna call and yeah. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can, can we have a big <laughs> TV? Or a, oh, <laughs> just his face at the end of the table. <laughs> is, is he in this hotel? hotel? Is yeah. he in this hotel room? No. Skype no. it in. No. It's like two floors away. <laughs> 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 I tried to put it in the sixth floor. Can you hear me down there? Well, it's nice you can't knock over some water. Can I look over yeah. the other <laughs> I can't knock over any of you. Where am I? My notes are uh, uh, notes as much as they are. I had a pen and paper. Bill Water is my only note so far. So. Or do you, I see your name here several times. Yeah. Just trying to have yeah. names. Do you have any notes ooh, already? Ooh. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. There's two hell yeah's here. You oh, wrote your own bad. name several times. Hell yeah. Like, why did you write your own name several times? We have three point <laughs> four viewers, <laughs> yeah, by the way. Yeah, the, uh, the first one, any form, write your name. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You keep that. I don't, don't want to know the hair. What? Smoke it. Smoke it. Get that in your system. You might have them too. <coughs> Wait, so we have 3.4k viewers? Yes. Uh, we, have from we have the StarCraft oh. tweet, which yeah, thank that's you very much, that's people at StarCraft, for that. And we <laughs> also have. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta watch so the video. So we're waiting for yeah, Destiny. But we can also hit some of the questions as well, way. just to keep the ball rolling here. Sure. Okay, so defining the stream was the first main point. I wanted to kind of limit the conversation to three key things. Defining the stream, refining the stream, and expanding the stream. So defining it, I think one aspect, especially for people who are new to Twitch, is they kind of already know what their advantages are as a person, and they expect other people to just want to watch them because I'm cool, and if I turn on my stream, they'll watch me but it's an extremely competitive market right now, so you should be able to know not just why someone would watch you in the neutral capacity, but why someone would choose you over the other thousands of streamers who are online. So we talked about some of the edges and advantages, like for you, you have time management as one of your key advantages. Playing random, uh, could you talk about that as a decision between playing a single race in StarCraft? Um. I don't think it's so much a decision uh, as to just simply what I find fun. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you're not having fun on stream, no one's gonna watch. It's very obvious when a streamer is just simply doing it for the wrong reasons or just clearly not really wanting to play the game they're playing. So if I feel like playing random, I just play random. Yeah. If I feel like playing Zerk in StarCraft, I play Zerk. I mean, I'm not really like too focused specifically on what format I'm producing. I think it's mostly, you know, just on, on that day what I feel like doing. So you didn't choose to play random for a business purpose, it was for fun? Maybe maybe a little bit, but it was also mostly curious, like in, in StarCraft at least, like, you know, how the other races played. I mean, I played Zerg for like five years straight, and I was like, all right, let's, <laughs> let's try the others for a little while. Yeah. So I still like Zerg the best, but yeah. Yeah. Just mostly been for fun. What about you? It was, it was more of a business decision for me, I guess, to focus on it for streaming, but I, I was just indecisive. By the time I started playing random regularly in streaming, I'd already hit masters with each race individually. Yeah. Because I couldn't decide, and I, I never got good enough, and I couldn't commit. So, mm. but I, I was looking at it like, especially streams like uh, a few years back, there was almost no one played dedicated random, mm. and I already recognized like. Yeah, you got a lot of people who are like, I want to see what innovation's doing or something. But there are plenty of people who just want to see everything. Yeah. And there weren't too many people, like like I said, variety. And uh, just trying to get what other people aren't doing. And that's what I keep trying to do. It's harder now. People are catching on to that. But yeah. uh, that was the original thought process as well. Yeah, we will have Pig coming later. And he's also moved into the mostly random. But all of us came from Zerg. Too. I switched to random, too. Yeah, I know you're... 
Yeah. Yeah. GM with random right? Yeah, five six and Kriya. Nice. Which is like one That's pretty good. 40, 130 GM. Sweet. Nice. But it's carried by my Zerg. My yeah. Zerg win rate is like eighty five percent. My other races are like forty five, and I'm like, that's yeah. yikes. Proxy four X is really helpful. Yeah. I don't, I don't like the proxy four X. I just do the thermal shit. Like the two packs, like cycle on yeah. Hellion and then throw down three more packs. Okay, there's there's them. two types of things. There's players who play random, and then there are random players. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're saying you're a random player when you play Terran Protoss. No, I'm a player that plays random. <laughs> All right. We're <laughs> proxy throwing no proxy Rex. Pro just cycle on Hellion. We're in Roman Destiny, and no. I'm gonna turn off my video because he can already see us. So they'll see Destiny through the thing <laughs> on. <laughs> they'll see you. Yeah, he won. That's cool. I think oh, you probably cool. have to like lower the or like up the brightness or lower because it's just one big blue. Okay. Let me make sure the audio. We got a close up. Huh? Yeah, yeah, close up. Put the laptop closer. Right. Yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> Hello. Let me turn you up a little bit. Where is sure. my shit? I going? Yeah, a little bit. I have to mute myself. Hang on. Right. Hold on. Where is he? I don't know if it's He's not in here. If he's at the health center, I'm going to He's on the computer. <laughs> yeah, but like, is, is, is he at our hotel? He's, he's in there. LA. We're in LA. Have you ever driven from Anaheim to LA? Yeah. It's traffic. It's like densely packed cars. It's, it's like a parking lot. You can't just get there. It's really good. Yeah. Not LA. Mm, yeah. No, it's like a road. Just hold it's the laptop up to the phone. <laughs> Probably takes a couple hours to do it, but... Alright, you got the notes? You good? Can they all hear me? Or is yeah. 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 Yes. Hello. What's up? Okay. Sorry, I didn't like to this, so let's take a fucking seven hour drive through fucking traffic, so... Heck, dude. I just heard fucking three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so by the way... Oh, wait, oh, this is a neuro stream. No, yeah. that's worth time. Yes. Well, it's Twitch front page, so they say try to be PG-13 if you can. If you can manage it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we all went around, we all did all of our introductions, and the opening is basically defining the way that your stream fits into the landscape of Twitch streams and why someone would choose to watch you over other broadcasts. Okay. Wait, are you like asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you point blank directly. The world is waiting for your answer. Um, so for my stream, uh, I think one of my big drives today is politics because I engage with uh, political conversations from my uh, point of view in a pretty unique way. Not many left-leaning people are very edgy, and uh, I think I'm relatively informed. And I think I've got a lot of followers recently for that. So I think that's one of the big drives as it relates to my stream is uh, like the political and the philosophical discussions and whatnot. Ironically enough. Sweet, and you, we have a bunch of StarCraft people here, so you started from StarCraft. What was that branching process like out to other content? Um, so, um, let's see, how deep do we want to answer this? Okay, so I think, okay, so I've talked about this a little bit before. So I would say that you have three different types of viewers for a stream, generally, like three broad groups. You've got people that, um, You've got the core, the best group. These are people who will watch you no matter what you do. Then you have the second group. These will be, these are people who will watch you whenever you're doing a particular activity. And then you've got like your um, lowest level or highest level family, like a group. And these are people that kind of just like filter in and out of your stream, the churn, right? Um, I think that your goal as a streamer is to constantly convert people from higher level groups into lower level groups uh, as much as possible. So if somebody's wandering in, watching you play something, hopefully they will always stick around because you're playing something. Uh, whenever you play that particular thing. And then people that always watch you when you play that particular thing, hopefully you get it so that they're always watching you, always. So um, the original question was, how did I transfer from one thing to another? I think that the type of content that I do and the personality that I have and the personableness, I think that's the word that I have with chat, um, so in terms of like having like real substantial conversations that are either incredibly personal to me or incredibly important to other people, I think causes people to be a little bit more attracted to me as a person rather than just me as a streamer or me as a StarCraft player. And I think the result of that, of getting people invested in my personality uh, on a personal level, I think that that made it so I could transition to other things a, a little bit better than most people could, at least at that time. Right, so you're saying that by having a clearly defined personality that can be imposed on any game that you're playing or someone you're talking to. And then the other thing you were talking about was converting your base level viewers who don't interact into solid regulars. 
through the process yeah, of, like, a, of yeah. like interacting with them in a in a significant way. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I think community, community interaction is what I built my stream on initially. Um, back when I did it, almost no one was doing it. Although it's probably a little bit, I think it's a lot more common now. Um, but back in the day, your general thing was just, um, you know, you played games and people watched and you were either funny or good, and that was it. But I would spend a lot of time, like, in my Twitch chat, even after streaming, well, my Justin TV chat, even after streaming, talking to people and whatnot. And I think that level of engagement got people a lot more personally invested in me. Yeah. Yeah, of all of us, I think you have the strongest website where basically your chat is rolling 24-7, where they just hang out and talk there. So what was that process of community building like? Um, it's a little bit less relevant these days, but I guess it was driven in, in part because back a long time ago, a long, long, long time ago, although everybody in this room actually, I guess, would know, um, Twitch was a far different place. Um, the, the chat service was incredibly unstable, and things would crash quite a bit. Uh, and, and then just the, the usability of it, it was a flash thing, like even the, the app itself on the page could crash, it was just really annoying. And so I was motivated to build a secondary chat to have a more consistent place to communicate with people that I had more control over. Um, so there were a lot more feature ads, like the ability to highlight usernames, the ability to tap complete emotes or people's names, uh, stability of the chat, the front end view and usability, all of these things were incredibly superior to what Twitch had at the time. These days, this chat has come a long way, so I, I'm kind of, I don't have as many value adds as far as that goes anymore. But back then, I think it was pretty important in establishing kind of a, a unique community where people could go and chat, and that were all my fans weren't necessarily talking about me. How do you manage your attention between your chat and the Twitch chat for your brand? Which um, do you watch? I generally pay attention to my chat more, I guess, because I, I ultimately want to convert people into people in my chat. Although that's a little bit harder to do today because again, the value adds aren't. The product is pretty similar to Twitch's chat. But um, yeah, I mean, like I, I try to view both. If somebody adds my name in Twitch chat, I'll, I'll read that. But it, it's, it can be hard to keep up with both. I, I really do read both, but I generally only respond to my Destiny GG chat unless somebody specifically mentions my name in Twitch chat. Yeah. And you've also, like you've been saying, you are kind of an edgier broadcaster. How have you changed over the course of Twitch? Because it seems like your content has changed. Have you changed as a person as a result? Um, thank God, my personality has kind of shifted along with the times, although I lag a little bit behind, I guess. Because um, if I was the same person I was seven or eight years ago, I don't think I would be able to survive on Twitch. Uh, because the moderation and everything has changed significantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys were around a long time ago, man, it was, it was quite a different landscape. Yeah, Six well, we remember your like old school Wings of Liberty YouTube memes that put you on the map in the StarCraft community, and a lot of that stuff is like manga TOS these days. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even talking about that. I mean, you could blatantly just like call people the N word and stuff on stream, like over and over again. You would never get banned from JTV or Twitch for that. That was never like a bannable thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, probably, we could probably think of certain TV2 professionals that might even have <laughs> done in the past. But um, yeah. yeah but um, would you say that your personal <clears throat> perspective has changed on a lot of those issues as a result? You've probably talked about this on your stream, but I'm not up to date on that. Yeah, I mean, like, I, no, I. I, I pretty true to myself in terms of what I believe in. If, and, and I mean, you, at this point, you can talk to a myriad of people that have interacted with me in real life. Like, I'm, I'm pretty much the same person uh, on stream as off stream. I don't change my views, I guess, for commercial reasons. Although I understand why some people like Richard Lewis <coughs> might think that I do that. But I, I mean, I'm pretty true to, to what I actually believe in. And my views have genuinely shifted, I guess, socially more to the left over the past decade uh, compared to what they used to be. So I kind of got lucky they just kind of lined up with what Twitch wants generally. Although I do find myself ha having to trim a lot of my more edgy jokes in terms of um, saying certain things, but. Yeah. So what got you back into StarCraft? Because I know you had your uh, your little hiatus and then you're back now and you have been back on the StarCraft ladder. What was the motivating factor for that? Um, I mean, I've always liked StarCraft. It just hasn't been like kind of the best, I guess, like career decision to, to play it for too often. But um, like, I, I, yeah, I finally took the bullet. I bit the bullet and I quit League because, oh jeez, um, I just couldn't do that to myself anymore. And I'm pretty sure that suicidal tendencies and whatnot are probably against the TOS. If I played the game for too much more, I would have either gotten banned or killed myself. <laughs> I'm winning that game. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess like just looking for things to fill the void. I've been playing the Call of Duty game a lot recently and also Minecraft. But then having StarCraft sit in there as like a comfortable like second or third game is nice to be able to rotate. I mean, I still like 1v1 games, and obviously my entire skill set, for better or for worse, was in RTS. So. Yeah, if, if people don't know, you were a professional StarCraft gamer for a while as well, which you told me in person, I think, one time that it wasn't 
as satisfying if you were losing to players who you knew you could beat if you dedicated your time like a pro player. So that was a... Um, we, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was really disappointing. There were a few, there were like two brief moments where I think I was like reaching, I think what I could do in terms of skill if I would actually play like 12 to 14 hours a day. Once is when I was actually staying for a month at Katz's house, um, which is where I had my, I think my, one of my best tournament performances ever. Um, I didn't quite make it in, but I beat like Ace and Bomber like back to back and series and whatnot. I was really happy with that. Uh, to, uh, to be fair, investors were really broken at that time too, and not many people were using them yet. But um, I think I was genuinely pretty good as well. And then I was in Perry Bar, I was in Korea for a little bit, and I think I was getting decent uh, around there too. But I never had like the sustained practice time because I have like a real life and uh, you know like a kid and a house to manage and everything. So I never could. And, and then also I streamed everything, right? So I was doing streaming as well. I never could like put that 100 percent of my focus and attention. And I don't know anybody that's been able to do that, like be a full-time streamer and compete at the highest level. It seems like you kind of have to make a trade-off at some point. Yeah, I don't think it's physically possible because you're limited by the 24-hour day and by human yeah. energy. Yeah. So, yeah, every time, I say this to my chat because they ask me a lot, like, why are you not a challenger, this and that? And it's because I'm answering that question right now. Like, every second counts if you're looking at the best players in the world and how successful they are, they can spend all that time on replay analysis or diving into another game. Or yeah. doing drills or something like that. So the interaction does come at a cost. People have to find what makes them happy and what works for them business wise. I think it goes beyond that. It's like like just the practice is better or worse, right? Depending on if you're playing to an audience or not. Because you have to think about what they're thinking, you have to read what they're saying. Yeah. Like even in the game, like <coughs> I found myself often in tournament games actively watching fights that I didn't need to watch, mm -hmm. right? Because when I'm streaming, I want them to see what happens in the fight. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's actually a, a factor of context switching, is what they call it, where in StarCraft you have different events and you have the time it takes for you to initiate the action to change the situation, but then you can also watch the animation. And the best players in the world, they cut all of that, which is effectively dead time. But for a streamer, the viewers like the satisfaction of seeing the wooden line connect with all those workers. Pro player doesn't really care they're moving on to the next step. So you do end up losing milliseconds here and there, which adds up I, I think, a lot. I think part of the streamer for me, when I was, I mean, I was never a pro player, like when I was trying to improve what I usually do, I played five, six games, then take like a 15 minute break or something. Mm -hmm. That was really good to be able to just grind out games. You can't be taking a 15 minute break every hour when you're streaming. That's just not a good policy to have. So yeah. Just basic stuff like that kind of gets cut out as well. Yeah, also like watching replays, for example, right? Like. Uh, your ability to watch replays effectively, like if you're just watching by yourself, you just scroll to where you want to, where you want to go. You can't do that to your stream. It's just like you're just scrolling through your replay or rewinding. It's just like they're like, what, what is he doing? What is he looking for? Right? You have to explain it. You have to like walk him through the process. That's yeah, that's also the prioritization of what am I trying to learn from this experience versus what do they want to learn from mm -hmm. that experience. Yeah. And it's not always the same thing. Who here coaches or has coached? Okay, hands are raised. Oh, I'm raising my hand. You are raising your hand? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we should build that one on the laptop. How big of that has been uh, a part of your product? Was it ever substantial? Asking you, Justin. Uh, okay, yeah, I can't see you, so it's hard. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a, a long time ago it was, but I was doing way too many lessons and I had to stop that and stop. I priced myself out of it. It was drove me crazy. I'm not a teacher. I mean, I think I can teach decently well, but it's not a job. Mm-hmm. And you've coached quite a bit, but you're not doing it as much these days. Mm, I always set my rate mm -hmm. higher than than like the worth of it. I thought because yeah, I just don't enjoy coaching people who don't want to be coached. A lot of people just wanted to hang out back then. Mm. Uh, I sort of felt like and like so. For example, if a pro player came to me and some do, and they want some coaching or some advice or just to watch a replay, then I charge them nothing because I actually enjoy that interaction. Mm. Um, but if like. You know, random person from my chat asks me for coaching, and then say I'm explaining something, and they're stubborn about it, or they don't care to listen to what I'm saying. Um, then it's, it becomes a really awkward thing for me because I want to tell them to, uh, like I don't know how to not swear here, but like I'm like yeah. So, <laughs> but, but at the same time, it's like, well, they're paying me as well, so it's like difficult to make that balance, and that's why I just kind of avoid it for the most part. Yeah. Unless someone's willing to pay a lot of money, in which case I will assume that. That I kind of found a middle ground with my stream because I, I used to do coaching, like paid coaching, and, and that'd be something that was good. Like when I was small on YouTube and stuff, people would want to look at that. But 
but now I've kind of, the, the middle ground I've found is called, I just do angry coaching, which is like, I'm not gonna be nice. And I, you pay me 10 bucks for a replay, mm -hmm. and I just pick apart why you're bad and go. And yeah. so that's fun content. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be like, well, if you just made a few more workers with these 1,200 minerals you have, it's like, mm -hmm. if I can't actually tear into it like I want to and enjoy it, then I feel like the price would be much higher just to spend my time doing that, which is not that enjoyable. Yeah, there's a, a supply-demand equation there for the coach. How many hours a week do you want to coach? And how many requests do you get for coaching? You're trying to set your rate, not just for what you think your time is worth, but also based on that cap. Because you don't want to be coaching eight hours a day. Some people might want to, but I feel like not less right away. I think her, uh, personally for me, I'm doing maybe two to three hours a week, and I don't really want to do more than that. So that's just kind of the flow. Because it is time that can be very rich depending on the student. If the student really engages and cares, and you can see them grow, that's exciting. It's great, yeah. Yeah, but sometimes, like you said, either they want to hang out or they want to kind of argue with you about yeah. why their strategy is good when it's actually not working for them, which is pretty frustrating. Yeah, so, so one thing I found for that, I, I used to do a lot of coaching with um, pretty much everyone that requested it, right? I had like a rate, and if someone wanted to pay that rate, I would just do it. But one thing I found is that I didn't really like the idea very much when I would talk to someone, I did some coaching, I did like an hour of coaching, and then I would never really hear back from them or I wouldn't really hear again from them like a couple of weeks later. So what I've been doing over the last couple of years, and I, I still do this with like a group of people, is basically do it all through Patreon, which makes it like a recurring thing. Mm -hmm. So I do it usually once a month, but if people don't have time or they want to do like a double session next month, or if it just not, it's not, it's not working out, I, I try and you know help out the same people over a period of time. And it's been it's been really rewarding, yeah. There are a couple of people that climb up to my skill level, and then I'm you know can't really teach them very much anymore. But it's cool, like I had someone all the way from Silver League and he's now, you know, pushing me to Masters. It's yeah, pretty clever. Yeah, you found radio solutions. Yeah, I, I think honestly that's probably the best solution. I don't want to, like, just like you guys, I don't want to do too much. Because I'm not a teacher, you know, I just, I know it's like video games. <laughs> I love teaching so long as, you know. Yeah, if, well, if it's like two, three hours a week, it's cool, but if you do it all day, it's too much. So, yeah, I think that's pretty fun. So one question moving along with the defining your stream. You probably get this quite a bit in the real world. How do you describe your job to people who don't know about streaming, <laughs> if they ask you? You gotta be real careful that you don't sound like you're a chem girl. That's what I found. Online yeah. broadcaster and advertiser. Okay. There you go. Oh. It's the basic, I just go with, and that, there are plenty of forms to fill out. Yeah. So. Yeah. And broadcast games. Yeah. You, Destiny? Um, wait, can you repeat the last thing? So we don't have to you guys can Yeah, how would you describe your job to someone who doesn't know about streaming? Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, I, it basically depends on the level of tech expertise I guess of the person. Like if a grandma is asking me like, how do you, um, what do you do for work? I'll say like, oh, it's kind of like YouTube, and that's it. And then if they were, uh, the, the younger the person, the more I'll kind of explain, depending on what I think they want to hear. Hmm. You have to gauge the person asking the question, how much interest do they actually have? And if you give them a basic understanding of it in like 60 seconds, and they ask more questions, then you go into more detail, depending on. Yeah what they're actually asking, because some people are just like, hey, what do you do? And then they don't actually want to hear, so you don't need to invest five minutes trying to explain this to somebody who's not interested. Yeah, it was, the, the it parallel was there is just evil. Like only in like the last year or two, especially with like Ninja getting so much coverage, yeah. like when I say Twitch, even some like middle-aged people that I never would have expected, they actually have heard of Twitch, know what it is, so. Yeah. It's yeah, getting to the point where you can say you're a Twitch streamer, and people who aren't usually into that know, but before it was, yeah, on the internet. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been been nice as the notoriety of Twitch increases, the legitimacy of what we do is increased, and more people can kind of figure out what we're doing. Uh -huh. So, one question about defining the stream: uh, Are there any color themes, aesthetic, or artistic elements that you use that you would say define you? Because I I know you, Loco, you have like a teal-ish color on a lot of your stuff. Yeah, I, I always did a lot of graphic design before I did the... Uh, it's good, it's not solid your design, I know. I, I, tr yeah, I try to make it look clean, so I kind of like the, the minimal look and like, you know, the same color themes. That's basically what I'm tuned to, but it's not uh, it's not super strict necessarily, but I do like, you know, making my own overlays and like trying to create my own transitions and, mm -hmm. you know, just making it look nice. But yeah. I know some people really don't care. 
I mean, <laughs> God damn, that was sad. Right out. Quality and quantity are both important things. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, used you. To, it used to be you had like so much stuff when you stream now. Like you, yeah, you really eye tracker, a keyboard. Yeah, that's like so no, I know a lot of text, but then I forgot that people on Twitch can't read. Yeah. So <laughs> then you just just e even when you do have the information, but I, I kind of cut down. Now I just throw a bunch of overlays and stuff in. Like it's always I always have another bit or something, but there's no theme behind it for me. Mm -hmm. It's just more let's see what happens. Like I think you've done a good job branding the W. Really well, that's the only thing I didn't do myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Wardy? Um, I mean, I rebranded actually from I used to be FC2 Improve, mm -hmm. and I rebranded as Wardy TV, and then it's kind of this weird thing where like I run as Wardy TV, but I also try to push myself more as just I'm Wardy, mm -hmm. Man and stuff. So it's kind of like I think I do it really badly <laughs> because I just split myself up so many places along the way, and it kind of works now where. I, I use Wally TV for most things, apart from when I speak out on Twitter, and those stuff not a good idea mm -hmm. to, to any sort of branding. Um, but yeah, I've just kind of got a good design, something that I thought worked. I like to keep it simple, just something that can be easily used, easily identified, mm -hmm. can be used anywhere, and then, yeah, just kind of run with it. I've got like a bit of a local green going on as well. Yeah. So, you know. You got local green and a W from winter? I, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I'd say I learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that transition you're talking about is going from being a kind of general concept to being a name and a person, yeah. which is more relatable than yeah, exactly. improvement, which sounds vague to me. Yeah, it was like one of the, I just, when I first started stream, I just made a practice group that was called SE2 Improve, and so while my Twitch channel was never called SE2 Improve, we always did like the SE2 Improve events and this and that, but one of the, yeah, the SE2 Improve team made a wonderful event, I wish it's like I remember that. Yeah, me too, me too. Uh, but I actually think one of the most interesting things with tournaments is that branding obviously really matters. And for example, I can cast the Kung Fu Cup on like a Thursday, like prime time Korean time or something, and it can get less than a thousand viewers. But if I cast like a Wardy TV event with like the same players, it always feels like it gets more viewers because it's branded as Wardy TV, which is really dumb because the Kung Fu Cup is like a really good event and it's like got really good players and got a lot of prize money in it. But because it's not a name that like people look on like Team Liquid or Reddit and stuff, and they're not like, ah, oh, Kung Fu Cup, like, people just don't know it immediately. Whereas if I name something like Wally TV XYZ, it just does have a big viewership kind of hit on it. So mm. it's very important, I think, to have the name really well. Wouldn't well, it be great story. if your best content was also your most watched content? Everybody would be happy with that. That would be, <laughs> that would be excellent. That's actually a really tough point too, where you feel like certain videos or whatever you pour tons of effort and planning into, and then it's and then kind of on your lower end. Well, like one of my most viewed videos is me opening a bunch of Hearthstone cards. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I put so much effort into videos, and you know, I did something legendary in the titles that people are like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna watch that." But it's yeah. It's like the lowest ever kind of cult that you can make. Yeah, I've done a lot of classes where I'll spend maybe two to three hours thinking of the class and typing up the notes for the class, and then I do the class for multiple hours, yeah. and then I'll sneeze and fall out of my chair, and I'll get <laughs> like 10 cups of the news. <laughs> so, yeah. that's, that's, that's the evil that we deal with. I don't, I don't care about cats on the aesthetic stuff. Because yeah, you've always been like, really. Yeah. Uh, I've yeah. always liked, uh, I guess I studied uh, media arts and animation. So I like, uh, I, I, I've always liked design. Um, but even my stream and my branding and my design is like really inconsistent. Like I feel like I always change, like say once a year or something like that. But it's so very recognizable though. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be, I think. Like I try well, to just. At least the things I've seen, they look. You, know, you have a specific like style that's. Oh, for yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. so. Maybe so. But <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what a boring is the hardest part of this whole thing. <laughs> he's, he's getting some ice. Yeah, some ice. Yeah, some ice. Yeah, some ice. Does anyone want some ice? Water? We'll pour you a glass of ice. Nerds defeated by water. <laughs> what, about, what about you, Destiny? Branding, image. How do you define um, your aesthetic and stuff? I don't know. I, mean, I basically kind of did a guy that does graphic design work a long time ago for like a main local package. And then once I have that, there's just a few artists that I keep on call that I trust to do like design and whatnot. And then I just kind of, I have like my main logo and I try to make sure it's kind of designed around that. But I, I think, um, yeah, keeping things consistent from platform to platform, make sure your Twitch icons, your, if you've got a website, any of that stuff, if you've got a logo, you know, your social media and all of that kind of has like a consistent theme or a consistent look, it's probably important. 
one thing that stands out from your broadcast is you have a piano behind you a lot of the time, which I think uh, sets an interesting flavor to just your environment, and it says something about you. Yeah, sometimes a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit more than I wanted to, because I'm not a, the greatest piano player. <laughs> but yeah. Sweet. So we touched on most of the content related to defining the stream. How about refining it? So as streaming technologies progress, everyone's refining their stuff, so to stay competitive, you need to polish your content. How often do you guys upgrade your PC mic and webcam? Whenever I feel like it's worth doing it. About how many years? It's probably like, well, it kind of depends, right? Like sometimes it's like a big jump in particular like CPU performance and stuff, but right now I'm at a point where I bought it last year and I bought a pretty high-end computer and there's like absolutely zero reason to upgrade, but if say this year all of a sudden like performance would have gone up like 50%, right? Then it might be worth you know investing into. But I don't think like a lot of people are really obsessed over hardware, and I think that's kind of one of the mistakes we make. Like you can you can stream off. I mean, this is being streamed right now off of a phone, right? And most people have a phone. Like you can you can stream with with what you've got. And I feel like a lot of people are very obsessed over you know spending a lot of money on the highest end computer, or people making the excuses like, hey, I can't can't play this. Honestly, in my experience, 1080p60 streams are nice, mm -hmm. but not a lot of people really care about that kind of thing, as long as like the stream is just stable and you know it sounds kind of decent. Audio is more important. Than yeah, I think audio is way more important than video. Well, a lot of broadcast or, uh, viewers don't even have the internet to be able to watch 1080p60. Right, exactly. So yeah, I've got a good computer. I would probably upgrade every couple of years, but like you don't need to you know, have the sickest, the sickest hardware in order to pull it off. Well, microphones are one of those things where once you reach a good level of it, you don't need to keep upgrading that, yeah. usually. There's a limited memory on Twitch, so. Right. <laughs> yeah, and like, like, anything like studio broadcasting, they've used the same mics for like 20 years, you know, like, it's just one time. And once you get like a good, past a webcam or a snowball mic, once you get you know, yeah. something that's two or three hundred dollars or something, you usually don't need to upgrade that if you can save up for a specific microphone. And honestly, if you have a, a small webcam that's working for your video, I'd upgrade your microphone before the webcam. Yeah. I want to get a light. <laughs> I <wanna> just, <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's usually way too. cheaper to just get better lighting than like a better yeah. webcam. Like yeah. le webcam settings and lighting are way cheaper than like no, I need to get like right a two hundred dollar webcam. That's, oh, yeah. no, like, that's yeah. what I found over the years is better and better Plus lighting. You, you same stop. webcam. Yeah, well that's the thing too, is the resolution of the stream may be 1080p, which means you don't need a 1080p webcam unless it's full screen a lot of the time, right? which yeah. for us, that's yeah. not very often. Yeah. 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 Uh, who has a dedicated streaming PC? We all do. I think we all want one, but we're too lazy. That's the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so much yeah, I do. It's a lot of work. And we I think that uh, for hardware stuff, I actually, I'm not sure if I totally agree uh, with what was said previously. I feel like viewers, unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, have come to expect like a minimum standard in terms of what streams look like today. Um, I think maybe in this dark world, having the best hardware doesn't seem that important because of the way the images work on stream. So in RTS, there's a lot of static images that aren't changing a lot in unpredictable ways. So we can kind of look, we can get by with a little bit less in terms of hardware. But when it comes to FPS, especially the battle royales, if you're playing like Fortnite or PUBG or the Call of Duty um, Blackout, having like I think better hardware significantly increases the user enjoyability of those streams, especially when you're running around in like trees. In, in forested area and whatnot, like streams can look really bad. They can fall apart really fast if you're not on a pretty piece of hardware. I would agree that upgrading audio is more important than video, though. Um, bad audio can, can completely kill a stream. I think bad video can, can be overcome. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess we're all talking from the StarCraft perspective. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's cheese being spread around, is the only thing you need to notice. Physical cheese. We, Physical can't, cheese. we can't give you the cheese, but we can cheese you next time you play StarCraft, I guess. That's my nail ring. But yeah, one thing that a lot of people don't think about is certain viewers will listen to a stream rather than watch it, sometimes not even have it open, just to kind of hear that as a sort of radio station or background noise. I just advertise that now, like WNTR radio, yeah. like come and chill. A lot of people do have that second monitor, second tab. Whatever. From the alternate perspective, it's a little bit different than what's here. 
um, production for the pylon show, like that audio is extra important because a lot of the viewers, or in this case listeners, are only listening to the audio. So mm -hmm. after that VOD is uploaded to YouTube and I get the data file back down, I do post processing in the audio. It's like somebody's got a fan running, somebody has something going on in the background. Somebody? I can go in and <laughs> I was trying to be kind here, but like I can go in and post remove a lot of that stuff that they complain about on YouTube, but if they're listening, because I can't fix it, I don't have enough time to do that, but I, if I can fix it for most of the hundreds of people that are listening on podcasting platforms, if you have a post production editing area where you are a, a StarCraft streamer and you're editing a video anyway, take it attention to the audio, don't just focus on only video. If you're uploading it to YouTube and you're gonna work on it anyway, mm -hmm. you can clean up a little, there's simple little things you can do and complex things you can do. And just don't ignore audio if you're exporting to a different audience yeah. beyond Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I just, I wanna piggyback on the audio. Like in OBS, I don't know about Streamlabs OBS, but OBS has some built in. Like I use uh, noise suppression because I sometimes have like ventilation fan. Yes. I just want to touch on the audio really quick. Um, <laughs> yes, <you> can. <laughs> I, I think we I think we get it covered. The audio, <laughs> audio is important. Other than touch on the green screen, <laughs> just paint the wall. Sure. Yeah. That's what I did. Oh yeah, for you people with green screens, I have one. You have one. Yeah. You have one. You I have one, but I don't use it anymore. Okay. I don't. You do. You don't. Destiny, you don't. Right. Don't have a green screen. Yeah. No, I don't. Um, I think that's a brand new decision for green screens. Like, if you have a green screen, screen functionally is superior because you have, you can show more of the game, right? There's less clutter on the screen. Uh, but I think that there's an aesthetic given, as dumb as it sounds, I think there's a certain aesthetic given off by having like a webcam where you see a guy sitting in his home playing games and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I use it for a lot yeah, of like, like bits and stuff like that. Like, you got a lot of things you can do with it, have fun with it. I think. Like, honestly, that's how you see a lot of FPS players. Like, they don't even bother with the green screen because they just, I mean, where are they going to put the screen anyway? So just have a box. It's like you're with them and they're playing in their basement or wherever. So mm -hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense for games like that to not have a green screen. There are some scene switching memes that I learned from Sheezle that are pretty fun. Are you good on time, by the way, Cobra? Uh, yeah, they got delayed, so I'm good for a little while. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually going to make it. Cool. We got I'll, take, I'll take I'll take one that's that's good job You can find this you. guy in oh, the notes. The I put his social links in there. He's actually gonna go stream right now, but don't watch Yeah, I might actually stream as well. Thank you very much. Well, we're actually that was a good head shake. We're the same height. We yeah. When people ask me how tall I am, I just tell them I'm one neuro. This is neuro. My my unit of measurement. Hey, thank you very much, man. Bye. Bye. Okay. So what duration of stream do all of you like? What do you think is best? Two hours for me. <laughs> I think it depends on like, that's my It depends on your content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your content and how much energy you have. I think if you if you have the stamina and the consistency to go as far as you can, then that's great. Otherwise, I think consistency is actually more important than the time you stream. Mm -hmm. Like if you can stream the same, in the same uh, time slots and the same days, uh, and people know where to find you, that's more important. Now, if you can put enough volume that you're covering two thirds of the day anyway, then you know, like you're being consistent whether you like it or not. Yeah. So, but, but you know, if you're streaming tired, or you get people bored, get or. Yeah, then the quality of your content goes down. And yeah, you get less recurring viewers. So. Personally, I'm kind of the mass the hours and go around the clock variety, mm -hmm. where I just stream till I drop and sleep till I'm good. Yeah, I think Destiny, you do the same. Um, yeah, although, two things keep in mind. One, obviously, not everybody can do that. It's tr the transition from conventional work to streaming, so they can't put in 20 hours a day. Yeah. Um, two, also, um, two and three, I guess. This gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, well, okay, so two, even if you stream all around the clock, you, you should try to target somewhat cons uh, consistent hours. Um, it's probably good, for instance, to start at around the middle of the day, like around noon, uh, maybe even a little bit earlier if you're West Coast time, because you do want to hit those Europeans. Um, for instance, if you start at noon in California, you're probably at, uh, what, I think like 8 p.m. mainland? Nine. By air, depending on time zones, which is, so if you start at like 5 or 6, like you're already past midnight, you're, you're losing all potential European viewers, like not as many are going to be awake to do stuff. Um, you got that, and then also, um, there, there's some interesting theory, uh, this gets into high level stuff, but you can talk about how technically streaming at all hours of the day 
might not be your highest uh, ROI or be your highest return of investment on your time. So if somebody that streams 12 hours a day, seven days a week, might be better off streaming 10 hours a day, seven days a week, and using those extra two hours a day to plan specific events or something for stream that are gonna generate more interest than just streaming an extra two hours, right? Like if you take somebody that streams 100 hours a, a week, or, or I'm sorry, let's say 70 hours a week, I think is about what I stream. Let's say you stream 70 hours a week. If you were to stream 64 hours a week instead and spend like an hour Monday through Saturday planning something out, you could probably come up with something way cooler that losing an hour a day isn't gonna be that big of a difference. But that one event that you plan is gonna be so awesome and it generate more interest, more viewers, potentially more unique viewers that will stay around as being, you know, longer fans. But that might be a better trade off than just churning out millions of hours. Somebody give Yeah, that makes total sense. Rather than doing a, a raw grind of how many hours you can cram in, you're improving the quality of the hours by having a, a better sense of how those are directed in a way that diversifies yeah. and polishes your content. Yeah, there's always going to be like a marginal utility. There's going to be like a diminishing returns on hours. Somebody that streams 100 hours a week, you know, streaming 105 probably isn't going to push them over the top, but the five hours a week spent planning on something might be the difference between having some awesome event or some awesome thing. You go and buy arts and crafts, do some crazy stream thing or whatever, right? Or just streaming from our own. Yeah, or just reaching out to someone to collaborate and expanding your yeah. that way. I agree with everything he's saying on that, but like, I, I think there is well. a minimum. Time. Are I seconded? Oh, no? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but also on the lower end, there is, I think, a minimum time like you have yeah. to be hitting. Like, if you're starting out, I think like three, four hours is your absolute minimum, like many days a week, yeah. to really even have a chance to you get some traction. You don't until you like three or four hours in the stream. Yeah. That's why I like to stream like four or five hours for a tournament, because you really hit a peak. And in terms of like going back to sponsors and stuff, for example, if I hit that peak and then end the stream like an hour or two after, it, it kind of has a really good like viewership number there. Whereas if the stream drags on like four more hours and that peak dies off because the best match is gone and you just sort of throw in, yeah, let's cast these three play or whatever, then your average goes down. And obviously it depends what you want out of it, but if you're trying to sell a tournament and sell how successful a tournament was, that can be somewhat negative sometimes because it was like, well, why is the average so low mm -hmm. sort of thing? So, I mean, it depends how you look at it, but in general, I think you don't hit viewership until three or four hours unless you get like a big post early on, which is obviously not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, especially if you're doing like tournaments at different times of the day. Like if you did a tournament yeah. every day at like 6 p.m. Then, then it's, it's a bit different because right. people know to show up right away, right? But even then, like for example, I did the Clash League recently, even then they did Tuesday and Thursday every week at the same time. And even then it would take two or three hours for the viewership to build up to that maximum level. So I think that's true for all streams. Like you don't just log on and you have all your viewers, right? So you definitely need something to hit that sort of point. Especially yeah. for those beginners who are trying to get to that first 10 viewer count, which is the hardest to get once you get beyond yeah. the 10 viewers. If you're just streaming for 30 minutes here and there, it's really hard to ever get to your 10 viewer audience. Yeah. It's a very momentum-based thing too, yeah. because that it moves you up in the listings the more viewers you have, which yeah. kind of ramps that up. So what we're talking about here is streaming for a minimum number of hours so that you have enough people who got the notification, who are your regulars, that they build that up, and then you, it puts you up in the listings where you're getting some new unique viewers who are clicking into your channel and raising that even more. I think the most important thing is consistency, honestly, like on all fronts, not just uh, not just uh, how many hours you stream or when you stream, but also like your character, like how you act, mm, yeah. um, you know, like what, what people perceive, because people expect consistency, like human beings are mostly consistent, you go to someone that you want to talk to something about because you expect to react a certain way or comfort you a certain way, right? So the more consistent you are, like, hell of your life, you know, and like for example, when I'm, when I'm quitting cigarettes, I'm like, should I stream? Because I know I'm going to be a dick, and, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's diff it's a difficult um, thing to balance, for example, right? So mm -hmm. just I think consistency in general is uh, is pretty important. My, well, we're already talking about my my philosophy on that, like what I try to do and define like how long I'm going to stream. My idea is like even if no one was talking in chat or like commenting or something, like would someone want to go back and watch this even after the stream is ended? Unless I'm doing something like specifically chat oriented, and if the answer is no, I'm probably not good to stream or I shouldn't be streaming another two hours because like I'm just sitting there barely talking. I'm done. But I try to have that standard for defining how long. Um, and I think that's the hardest thing when you're starting out to start to get to is would people want to watch this even if like they weren't there live? Which 
puts you above a lot of people who are just like treating it just as a stream. Yeah. It puts you kind of above even if it is on Twitch. That whole thing is a real issue anyway. It's just like sometimes you're streaming and if you're not having a good stream, like you should just call it. Sometimes I stream and there's sort of no one in chat and the viewership is a bit low or something. And so I kind of think like, it's kind of, you know, maybe it is a good day to call the stream a bit shorter because my time is better spent doing something else, like planning, which can improve tomorrow with stream, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's that real balance of like, obviously it sucks to kind of shut down a stream for the people who are watching, but it could still overall improve the product in the end. So it's, I mean, it's a tough balance to find. And that's Marvel's time. That's I kind of a, <laughs> when you talk about the Marvels, you've got no worries in the world. You could call that a, a public service announcement too, because I think a lot of people by default would assume that calling a stream because you're tilted or tired would be weakness, and that it would be bad of you as a streamer. Whereas yeah. in the human sense, that's protecting yourself so you can stay healthy, and it's also maintaining the integrity of your brand, where you're not showing a compromised product, where you're not consistent with your normal attitude, it's worse. So yeah, definitely being able to call it would be a wisdom throw rather than a weakness kind of thing, which some people might assume. Yeah, the, uh, to go on that real quick, a lot of people, um, even business people, sometimes don't have this mindset where uh, we, we don't really think of our mental health as a quantifiable thing, but I think it's really damaging sometimes. Like if somebody can forgo some amount of sleep or some amount of mental happiness in order to earn more money, people will do it not realizing that they actually should be valuing their mental health higher for a variety of reasons than whatever dollar amount they're, they're chasing after. Um, do, doing things that end up causing you a great mental sacrifice, like you said, will roll over into all other parts of what you do. Like if you're sad or if you're upset or if you're cranky or depressed or irritated all the time, that's going to roll over into all of your other revenue streams. Your stream's not going to be as good. Your YouTube videos aren't going to be as good. Not many people are going to watch you or engage you in the same way. So your conversion on average as your sponsorship deals get worse. Like it's a really bad thing. You have to take care of your mental health. It's like your the product, right, which is essentially you, is being kept in you know optimal state at all times. Amen. Amen. All right. So yeah, we have one. I've got to take off in like two minutes, okay? Okay. So last question for you then, if you have two minutes. How do you recover from a difficult stream? What uh, is your self-care for stream? streams? Man. That's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. For, for me, something that's really important for me, and I might be in a privileged position to say this, I understand that, but um, I, I guess this is going to sound like I finished my last point, but like, I think optimizing for your mental health is the most important thing you can do. I don't think that humans are naturally built to be able to handle the level of public scrutiny that a streamer gets. I don't think it's a natural human thing to be able to do it. You either have to be a little bit sociopathic, or like very smart and, and intelligent in how you have people handle so for instance, Sean has people that will read Reddit for him to, to give him feedback where he did a long time ago, instead of reading all of it himself, like that kind of stuff is probably a good idea. Um, so that being said, I'm very particular about how I run my stream. I don't really do sub games at all because I don't think I would enjoy that. I only play the games that I want to play. I'm basically making sure that at every point, I, you know, I don't promote sponsors that I wouldn't use anyway. I'm, I'm always trying to maximize for my mental health. So I don't really necessarily have bad streams. I think if I got to a point where I was starting to have bad streams, I would have to take a step back and reevaluate what I was doing. The closest that I got to that actually was when I was doing lessons. When I would wake up and see that I had uh, like eight hours of lessons scheduled for the day, I would be like, okay, well, you know, I'm not, no. <laughs> At some point this became not enjoyable for me and I noticed that I was having a rollover effect and everything else, so I stopped those. I started to price me out of those so that people wouldn't uh, pay for them anymore. And uh, yeah, I think that that type of thing is really important. I think that making sure that your mental health is optimized at all points in time is really good. If you're starting to walk away from stream having bad days, um, you, you just, you can't do that like you can a uh, conventional like W2 work. If you've got a job and your job is kind of bad, you know, you can go to work, go home and be done with it, that's fine. But when you're self-employed, you're, you're, you're kind of a small business owner and your life is kind of your job. So if you don't enjoy it, that's gonna bleed over into all aspects of your life. You know, like nobody here is a streamer who streams for eight hours a day and then hangs up their streamer hat and becomes something else for the other, you know, 16. It doesn't work that way. You're, you're always a streamer. Everything you do, whether you're posting on Twitter, posting on Reddit, watching a video, talking in Discord, is in some side, shape, or form representing your brand. So I, I think that if you're going to always be on that way, you need to make sure that you're on in a way that is the most mentally healthy for you at, at all points of the day or else you're going to burn out so fast and so hard. Right, so you're saying that that process is more preventative for you where you're being proactive yeah. about managing that rather than after the fact trying to bandage your wounds, so to speak. Correct. I would I would never try to manage unhappiness. 
consuming. If I found that I was turning up unhappiness, I would look and say like, okay, well, what's causing this? I'm not doing it anymore. Like I would never do things that would have happiness because I I would worry about my ability to manage it, and then maybe okay, well, if I because if I fail at managing that unhappiness, then my career is pretty much over. So yeah, that just sounds really risky. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'll try to listen to you guys in the background. Cheers. Have a good night, dude. This has been Destiny. Uh, Cobra also left. He had to do rehearsal for BlizzCon stuff. Just the 18 left. Yeah, uh, Everyone's social stuff is in the document. I actually don't even know why I'm here. I don't even stream. I just said You've been on stream speaking. Awesome. You did. Right. Like you said, you two hours managed a lot of Stark. Uh, well, that's right. Stream. Sure. I'm going to bury the stream these days, too. It's like. Actually, you guys are really selling the panel, you know? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Well, like, I mean, I think I built a very successful no. stream, and I think I recruited like a lot of successful yeah. streamers. Like, like Destiny was on my team, like Nunes on my team. Like for Hearthstone, I think I recruited some of the best. Like I think I know what like streaming is. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm qualified. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right now I'm not. I'd, I'd like to go back into that point. I mean, I agree with everything. I think he's been doing it for longer, so he definitely has a better handle on it. And he's got the additional responsibility. But I found like when I put this on full time, it's like 16 hour days. It's like, just go, pretty much what would happen is I would I'd do as many hours as I could, and then one day, one day I just wouldn't wake up for like over 12 hours. And that's like, that's not a sustainable Oh, we got real streamers here now. We got <laughs> I'll just start. All right. We have two new guests. I like the It's been too long. Don't spill the water. It's been so long. It's been like three three days. Oh my god. Last week we were in pandas. Now we're in would you two be willing to move down one so they can be here? I can there. You know what? I'd love to. Is that physically possible? Move yeah. Okay. I'll give Sweet. I can be the, the water. Oh, right that is the water. I'll be the chat to you. Though. We've been oh, yeah. up for a little, a little over an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> so we had Loco, Destiny, and Cobra. They all talked with us for a while. And everyone did their intros. So. The format of this broadcast is defining, refining, and expanding your stream. So for the two of you, you can go one at a time. How would you define your product on Twitch? How does it fit in the landscape? And what makes you distinct? Okay. Hello. Hey, guys. Can you see me? The chat's in the way. Yes, you're visible. Okay. <laughs> My name is Luna V. What's going Perfect. on, guys? Um, I've had two hours of sleep, so might not have the best energy to talk um, I feel like what defines my community on Twitch is just like a place where people can feel welcome. It's a positive environment. I like to kind of um, grow that and expand on just like making others feel welcome, trying to eliminate toxicity, and just like play games and learn StarCraft together. Mm. Yeah. So it's a it's a warm atmosphere. Yeah, people I think so. Hang out and it's well, not what do you guys think? I think so. I, think. I would agree with that. Thanks One of so. the so yeah. things that's distinct yeah. for you is you're very disciplined with your Twitter and Instagram, which I think is a weak point for a lot of us. Where right. I, I actually met with. Thanks, uh, man. This has been years in the works. <laughs> I met with the guests this morning, and they kind of lectured me on that sort of process of you should have a distinct flavor on both of those platforms because it builds the lore of your brand in the scene. Mm -hmm. I don't do that yet, but you're really good at that. I feel like with that. Uh, with my Instagram, it's more art to me, like just with the color combinations and compositions. And I think that's just my art degree showing through. Mm -hmm. And I like to do art on my trick sometimes too. So. What motivated you to start doing that? The Instagram? Yeah. The I don't know. Instagram. I think it was more of a passion. Like I see other people post things on Instagram and I kind of like it. And I've always been into fashion and makeup, so I'm just like, I should probably start doing this more often. Yeah. So if I. Yo, hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Hey. Um, I guess the way I would define my brand would be someone who is still struggling to get out of the pro gaming mindset and become a full time streamer because I have plenty of days where I like, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm full time streaming now, I'm just like going about it that way. But then I have the days where, let's say you lose a lot 
and then you just get really frustrated. And I have that mindset where I'm just like, I hate losing really bad, mm -hmm. even though I'm like not focusing on winning very hard. Mm -hmm. So mine's more like, uh, I, I try my best to be a chill dude. I feel like most of the time I do it as well, but sometimes I have like really tilty days. Mm -hmm. And my community is more like, Honestly, I feel like you can do whatever you want, but if you cross the line, which is like a pretty far line, that'll probably ban you or something. I've been like probably one person a year. Yeah. It's pretty chill. Like most people can, are welcome there to do whatever they like. And then, uh, yeah. yeah it's just happy place. It's, uh, it's not, it's, it's, I guess it's more of a warm and, and, and chill dude. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like a chill, chill place. It's a chill yeah. place. I wouldn't say, good good yeah, I wouldn't say happy place. You got warm and chill. It's, yeah, it's not a happy place because I definitely have like a, a, a wide range of people I talk to, but. It's a chill place, yeah. for sure. And um, yeah, I, I guess the biggest model of my stream would be I'm just trying to be someone who's like playing at a relatively high level still while being e extremely informative as to like what I do. Because I explain a lot of shit on my stream. Yeah, I would say you have overlap with cats in that you think about the game from the building blocks rather than from copying the highest meta yeah. down. So like you teaching me gasless ZDP last weekend yeah, yeah. was something that I haven't really thought about because no one really does that at the highest level, but it has a lot of merits that you can explain and point out. So you've got that educational element in yeah. broadcast, which is good. Gasless ZDP. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I know, I know. Wait, what, 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 what's good about well, gasless ZDP? Well, it's in, it's in a, okay, so it's in a, if okay. I'm not playing on Korea, uh, okay. I'm not like at 6K in So you're Korea. expecting them to be shitters. But, <laughs> that's what you're saying. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's like a, you know, a way to measure what I'm about to say, but for like two seasons, my win rate in ZDP was like 85%. It was really good. It was my best match. Okay. What's your goal with gasless ZDP? I open roaches and greed, oh, and I fully set my bases by five and a half minutes. Yeah, the goal with gas is always the same, right? Yeah. yeah. Gives you a device that comes with paint. Sure. Like I, I have, but I, if you're going gas, it's like because you're forced down a certain. I have timings when I take gas, depending on what Thornos does. Every I it changes. So you do. essentially forced to go roaches, though. Yeah, you are. 100% you have to go roaches. And I, I don't like, know what the F I think you are. I, I think you're 100 You're, you're, well, the thing is, you're really, really like, for example, you're really delayed. You, you don't have the, so when you go gas, <laughs> Hatch gas pool or something like that, you have pretty quick wind speed. Use that for scouting and go, uh -huh. you can go into like melee or carapace, whatever, yeah, whatever you want to do. The upgrades are usually really quick. Yeah. You don't really gain much when it comes to like a faster third base with gasless because you can only take it so fast, anyways. Like you can take it really quickly if you go hatch gas pool, no one will already take that third hatch. It's probably just as fast as any gasless three hatch. I take my third hatch at night and fly every game. That's what Solar and other people do, don't they? With gas? With gas. Uh, you think they can keep up drone production? Yeah, because I, I actally, if I take, the thing is, if I, if I scout, if I scout, it fucking, um, I think gas is objectively next to great. It does, 100%. Because if I, if I scout, it doesn't keep using a lot of the It does, it does. Well, even if you take the gas, that's four and a half workers that are not mining minerals. This is the gas reserve discussion. When do we take you, gas? Is it good? Is it bad? <laughs> Can we resolve this here? Should we resolve this here? I don't know. It's too complicated. It's over my head. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, with the advantages. If you just start it, like, there's advantages and disadvantages. It makes sense in ZDB. Because you're not taking the third base in ZDB. Not all the time, at least. This is like what StarCraft people are like in the wild. Fall off. That's oh, like, right. <laughs> if they fall off the outline, they just do stuff like but this. If you have to make like a ton of roasts, don't think it's going to wait until the Korean is for him to be like, okay, It's up to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But the thing is, like, when I take my gas, though, it's not until really late. Like, if I start a Stargate, I don't take my gas until almost four minutes. Whenever you're ready. Like, I have like 50 supply. Yeah, we'll corral people. We're getting water. Trying to be hospitable. Okay, so Thank one question. Know. So we solved ZVP. Great job. <laughs> I think oh, there are yeah. multiple Bonus question. Do you think there are multiple ways to solve a math problem? Yes. That's pretty high level. Sure. Right. There was a point that I think both of you are really good at, which is the aesthetic of your brand. You are green and you are black and yellow. Mm. When did that start? What is that? Oh, I don't know. This is a Liddy B. <laughs> My name's Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Thanks might for see the black yellow there. Remember to answer the question. Are you just going? Oh, I was just going to say, well, the nickname Lindsay B started from when I was a child. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed natural when that became my gamer tag, it became my brand. And then with the B on the end of my name, Libby, I had to just stick to the color thing. Otherwise, yeah. it would, nothing would be fitting. I did start off with pink because that was my favorite color. Um, pink and yellow. 
And then, uh, yeah, so it kind of branched from there. And I just stuck more towards the um, the overall B aesthetic because mm -hmm. it fit more. Nice. Where'd you get the green? Uh, I've always liked green. It's been my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, honestly, like decades now. Yeah, like uh, when I was in school, I actually bought like green shoes. Because uh, I was like, oh, that's sick. <laughs> well, that's sick. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, oh, look at them. They're so good, the green. Like, uh, and then I got my first car as well that was purely based off that it was green as well. I was like, that's the one right there. <laughs> Why green? Because it's my favorite. I don't know, man. It's it's always yeah, I've, I've, always, I've always really liked the green. Fine. I think that's good. That's, that's as good a reason as any. Yeah, I just like green. Okay, so we can kind of rapid fire some of these questions. We had everyone kind of go around with these, but for you two. How do you describe your stream to people who don't know your channel? Don't know my channel or don't know Twitch don't or gaming Twitch, in general? Both. Oh, okay. So, so for someone who knows Twitch first. Okay, so for someone who knows Twitch, I describe myself as a primarily a StarCraft 2 streamer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I play I play StarCraft mainly. And yeah, yeah. Secondly, StarCraft. secondly I, I do artwork. Yeah, so I, I dabble in creative and a little bit of variety. Mm -hmm. So I guess I focus mainly on the StarCraft because that holds more weight, I think. Because yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> people are more impressed if you are decent at a video game than if you're just like mediocre at other yeah. games. Yeah. So, yeah. And then if uh, people haven't heard of gaming at all, which is the majority of Australians, mm -hmm. I will, <laughs> you know, get an Uber ride, they ask me, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, I play video games professionally. And then they're like, oh, like poker? I'm like, no video games, Mario. like on the computer. Like Mario. And then I start listening on some potential <laughs> Like what he just did, but I, I probably listen to like Lady Legends and Fortnite. I'm like, do you know Lady Legends, Fortnite, Starcraft? <laughs> that was a bit of a hit in the yeah. hit or miss. But then um, usually they're just kind of amazed by it. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, it's a really growing industry, very prevalent overseas, mm -hmm. and I do it full time. And they're blown away every time. One thing I've noticed that it ends up kind of being impolite in a lot of cases is when they hear that you play video games full time, they want to know how much money you make. Just yeah. because it seems like when you that get a real that's, 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 that's when you yeah. go with like Can the fucking look like, I make 500k a year. Yeah. And they're like, what? That's not like here. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. you don't make that much, but then you just let like, you like, they blow their mind. I'm a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a ninja, you make 600k a month. Yeah. What about you? Uh. The way I would describe my stream to someone who is like new to Twitch or new to my channel would be uh, it's a primarily StarCraft 2 stream that is a place where you can come and probably learn more about StarCraft um, through your experience there. Because I have plenty of people that always say things like, oh, I've been a long time lurker, and I just felt like, you know, asking a question. I'm like, yeah, like I'm really chill about answering questions. So, you know, like, oh, okay, okay. No, I'm, chill answer, I'm chill about answering questions, but I'm a little annoyed about people telling me what to do. That uh, would be the better way to say that. But uh, I have a lot, you know, if someone comes to my chat, even if I'm in the middle of a game, I'll try my best to, like, read the chat uh, at any point. Well, I know investors, but. Uh, they're really good, man. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's just a place where people can, like, uh, learn more StarCraft, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's. I would say primarily uh, what it's about right now. So more of an educational angle than you had yeah. in the past. Yeah. Uh, I, I try to throw entertainment value at it too, but I'm not. I don't think of myself as like a comedian where I can just make anyone laugh like on the spot over and I over. I think you're good. I think you're good at that. Maybe. If I'm in the if you're I'm contagious the, here. Yeah, yeah, I think if I'm in the mood to be funny, I have to be like I have to be like in the mood to, you know, to make a joke, to make a good joke, but I can't just force it. I think even if your joke is like. So far. Yeah, yeah, well, I laugh at it myself, but if I'm like, it's good, that, yeah. man! Yeah, that's, I think that's contagious. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, yeah. I think you're infectious. Yeah. Do you usually tell people that you were a pro? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, whenever someone asks, have you ever thought about going pro, or, do, you know, is that ever something you want to do? I'm like, yeah, I was a pro for, like, five, I was a pro for, like, four and a half years, <coughs> and uh, I've done it before, and then the, the follow-up is usually, are you going to do it again? Mm -hmm. And my answer to that is always, Needs the pay <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No. Uh, that's pretty that's good. But uh, my my answer to that's always if a new game came out that I was really interested in, like let's just hypothetically say Workout Four, I would yeah, 100% <laughs> do that then. Yeah. But I don't really want to go back into the grind for Starcraft Two because the game is mostly like laid out at this point, and it comes down a lot to like your mechanics mm -hmm. and your dedication mm -hmm. and how much time you put into it. Yeah. yeah. 
and I don't have the time to put like 12 hours a day minimum to be like, oh, I'm gonna study and do this and grind and practice. I can't do it. Like yeah. it's too much. Yeah. Oh, if you had to pick one, one yeah. be a successful yeah, streamer. Exactly. You have to. Be, if you had to pick one, be a successful streamer, be a successful pro player. Sure. Exactly. Always. Mm -hmm. Even if we're talking like Sarah. When I was a pro gamer, I was so jelly of people like Lyric because he could do whatever he wants. Well, yeah, but it's hard to be like. Well, no, of course. He's like he's like an outlier. Like he's like one of a kind. Where you're not gonna be like, oh, we're just gonna be lyric. That's on the streamer. Well, sure, okay. But well, I like, agree. If I could pick Ninja or Sarah, the, I'd pick Ninja. The biggest, too. The, the biggest problem I had is like one of the downsides of being a pro gamer was when I would have, like I have had a lot of friends that play games over the years, and um, we always like are like, oh, new games coming out, Diablo three, World of Warcraft, whatever. Any game that we're excited excited to play, I always felt like when I was a pro, I couldn't play it. And I felt like I was missing out a little bit. I was like, oh man, I really want to play that. And it's lowering my motivation to practice. But I would still do it and be like, oh god, I guess we've got to practice now. Yeah. But if you're a streamer, you can do whatever you want. You don't have that not obligation exactly. to win. Yeah, not really. Not really. No, well, like, like, you, don't, you don't have an obligation to win a tournament. In comparison. You yeah, do have an like, obligation to situate. Okay, let's say. There's more I, flexibility. I there's, like, on the top end for both sides, they're like, way off of like reality, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like being Sarah or being Ninja are like, way out there. Yeah. The difference, I think, is the income security, which also changes the anxiety yeah. level and the pressure. No, it, let's just say hypothetically, a yeah. company said, we're going to pay you a salary because you're a pro and you're really good, and we want you to play in our brackets or our tournaments. Yeah. Even if you had that security, I would still rather be a streamer because a streamer has a lot less pressure. Mm -hmm. It's more just like, are you comfortable being in front of people some and people, cameras? Some people create pressure, though. It's fun. Like, sometimes, I guess. Like, haven't you ever like been motivated by you're progressing fast enough that you're like, oh crap, I'm done. Like you keep it going, you know. Yeah, because yeah. But it is that pressure that, like, for me, the competitive aspect is yeah, a lot of what's pushed me towards like becoming a good player rather than actually like you know like my interest in being the best. That's it's true. Just, like, it's just. I, like, I guess the thing I'm trying to say is like I've never had as a streamer the type of feeling you have when you go to a tournament and you get eliminated and you're like. Oh, but there's also the feeling on the, on, the, on the reverse side though. You don't right. have the feeling if you're winning the whole yeah, time. Yeah, what when you won the, w, the WC? Uh, no, that's yes. funny. Like, like, that was amazing, right? Like, those, those highs are nice. That was fun. That's why I said I would do it again, but, it's but not nice. with StarCraft. Yeah, yeah, you, so, can't, you can't have that high without having Yeah, we're saying right. the yeah. emotional yeah. peaks and valleys are greater for a right. game or for a stream. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. I'm not going to disagree with that. I, I've never felt the same I feel like that's the emotion with me as being a streamer that I was when I was a pro. As a player, because I'm not. That good of a player, but those highs and lows still happen. Yeah, that was like, you know, yeah, I was like, like, so excited. Like, 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 well, yeah, also when, when like you coach someone that, that you oh, yeah, coach them significantly, that's a great thing. Yeah, like that, yeah, those were like, so like for me because I I dabbled in both being a streamer and a pro so player. Yeah. And when I'm a streamer, I don't find myself pushing that bar, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm trying to grow something that's somewhat out of my control, right? Like I could blow up, I could say 200 viewers the same or 100 or, or whatever. I don't really have full control over it. If I'm being the best I can be without forcing something that will make me uncomfortable, whether it be my edgy sure. or like way out of your personality, I'm not competing. Okay. So it's hard for me to like find which I prefer to do when it's somewhat out of control for both sides, right? Like I feel like as a pro player, it's more in my control. Like if I play 12 hours a day and I'm doing all the, the homework and everything, I should get better. Whereas if I'm being the best streamer I possibly can be, chances are it also grow. But I, to me personally, I feel like it's somewhat out of my control. It feels like it, but I think this panel is supposed to actually like solve a lot of those issues, right? Like in, in the sense that, like you get perspective as far as like how people do it, and like like things like consistency, sure. right? Like if you have a skill, I, I know, you just keep on playing pro and then work from there. I feel like that one. <laughs> sure. I feel like consistency <laughs> is like the biggest requiring word out of any streamer. I just don't know if it's it, harder for me to grow yeah. to grow a brand around my identity. Right? And like, I have to uh, cater to my viewers to some extent. I think it's right? almost impossible in StarCraft to grow your own personal brand to the extent, like, because, like, you just don't have the support uh, that, like, like, say, Ninja has. Well, sure. yeah. He has a whole team around him growing him as a brand. Well, I mean, like, for no example, one, you're no, a brand. Yeah, but like, I still don't have that kind of support. Well, nobody is going to have that support. Yeah, well, they, that's, that's my point. point. So, yeah. so, for me, I feel like. I have to cater towards the viewers, grow my brand, do this. That feels more out of the way than yeah, actually becoming a pro gamer. Where, I don't oh, know. Okay. Yeah. That's how it is. I think, I think what you would do, so ideally, is... Linear pop is what you're talking about. Yeah, because I, yeah. I think what you're worried about is being entertaining enough as being who you are and having to like become someone else 
in order to entertain, right? Like I, if I get the appeal. You don't want to half ass sure. two things. You okay, want to whole so ass one thing. Exactly. So so if that's if that's your concern, I think that the best uh, approach to this is just like be yourself, and then you can kind of turn up or down who you are. Sure. Right? And We've talked yeah. about that before, and how the stream personality <coughs> is going to be the most feasible the closer it is to your real personality. Yeah. So a lot of times when we were thinking about building a stream, it's like, do I want to play a character or do I want to just be myself? And we've talked about it's kind of like the world wrestling, where it's like yourself yes. turned up a little bit. Yep. So the intensity, the silliness, just how flamboyant you are with your behavior is yeah. more than it would be if you were just out with your friends. Even if you're someone like Doctor Disrespect, who obviously like puts on a uh, a persona of sorts and puts on the mustache and stuff. Like you have to have had enough researching as of to like what some aspects of that would feel like naturally it would be funny because you're recognizing him. Um, well, he was streaming for years before he something blew up. Into yeah. that. He used sure. to do it to a couple thousand viewers, uh, so he had time to build up that refinement in that yeah. right okay. time, like, right place. Well, my, my my point is that he, you can either like have a lot of time in your hands to develop a. Uh, an alternate personality that actually like is relatable uh, and doesn't feel like fake as hell, yeah. um, or you can just even like you, he could be like partly a similar person and just transfer that I'll, over to. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, because I'm not 100 percent sure, is a villa is a villa a persona or not? <laughs> Ooh, that's because funny. I've heard so many like people are like he's a fucking mastermind. Like, <laughs> he's actually just like so civil when he turns. I, just, uh, I, I think he's turned, turned up. Okay, uh, I think he's well, turned up. This is opinion based, right? Sure. Yeah, well, no we shouldn't right. we shouldn't go into the realm of like DMing people and at all oh, attacking, but behavior wise. Yeah. I'm just curious. I, I think there's more of this person that is in closer proximity to his character on stream than yes. any of us. I agree. It's, yeah, it's exactly like Doctor Dis Disrespect, right? Like what, what I was just saying. Like Avilo does that, I think, where he understands more or less, like in this case, like what's kind of toxic, and then he's like, I'm gonna be really toxic with this. <laughs> well, he's a showman, and that's yeah. one thing that counts a lot for streaming is your showmanship, and yeah. you can have, like, a lot of people put me as the light side and he's the dark side, but we're both, <laughs> we're both sort of doing the same thing, right? Like Which is we're, we're kind of playing up the moral side of it, yeah. and he chooses to, like, play up the toxicity. And he and has, have you ever thought about, like, collabing for it? Or like you could be on the stream with him and he's like kind of really he, angry. You're like, okay, well, he invited me on this talk, talk show back in the day. Uh, sure, the he had one talk, talk show. show. And I was invited, Ruff was invited, and oh, Did you go? Heck yes, I did. Hells yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never heard of this before. <laughs> yeah, well, Ruff was on, it, was on it? That sounds great. <laughs> sounds like great Ruff, of Mellow, and Nero. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's, that's a good one. You got the Trinity there. I do think Avila has this thing where like, people tend to shun him based on like this persona. And it would be more helpful if people just like were a little well, bit I think people more don't open. Know. It'd be easier to communicate if I didn't have to block him immediately every time. Like. Well, I, I actually <laughs> think people don't know if it's a persona or not either. Uh, but that's the thing, right? Because yeah. it's not binary. It's, right. It's not fully a persona and it's not fully right. sure. It's yeah. like yourself turned up. Right. I think he is turned up. I think he knows the buttons of the chat. And yeah. there is that like niche, right? Because StarCraft has had a history of toxicity gaming has. So there's that demographic of people who like to see that rager, because we all rage a little bit. A lot of it's poise, where on the inside you're screaming, but on the outside you say, all right, GG. Like, but I someone was man mewling you and like pause beaming you, it feels bad. It feels really bad. Yeah. And you just try to keep your face on and do all that, and then you get off stream and just. <laughs> <laughs> I think a good example would be that, like for example, Avilo might think that Terran is weak, but he, probably definitely doesn't think that Maru sucks, right? And he'll say both. So yeah. it's like, you know. And it's gonna, people are gonna be like, wait, no, Maru doesn't suck. This right, is people, people get angry, people win. get angry, <laughs> that's what he's after, right? Like, yeah. people get angry, he's winning, he's getting attention. Yeah. yeah, what I do is like, like just blow it up, like, like my meme is just remove Terran. Just get it out, like, too many proxies, remove Terran. That's that's the whole race. Protons. Well, there you go. Would but obviously not gonna happen, just go all the way with it. But and some people yeah. think they should remove Zerg. No. So, no, we'll we'll so yeah, I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> stuff so a bit of a change in gears. What are your thoughts on emotes? The importance, how dank do they have to be? Do you think you have <laughs> more subs based <laughs> on your emotes? Yes. Yes, yes. definitely. Yes. yes. 100%. Yes. Emotes are huge. Yeah. I made a stupid uh, Rifkin phase. Mm -hmm. It's made me so much money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People subscribe just to go and spam it in this chat. Yeah, so my favorite, uh, 
my favorite is, have you guys seen the Rue? Yeah, that's what I, I, exactly what I was going to say. That guy oh, only does pandas, so it's like, yeah. Yeah. it's like, it's great. Right. I've never watched the stream. Yeah. 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 I see are everywhere. I have exactly and I'm like, every I time I see a panda, panda, I'm like, dude, that's such such a cool panda, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. I first saw those, maybe rethink about all mine. I'm like, man, let's stop. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, it's like, branding is important, right? Like, this guy has branding, like, down and quality down. So, yeah. I would almost like if, if I was to subscribe to a streamer that I don't know, it'd be him because he has the pandas. Yeah. <laughs> so two things here yeah, yeah, yeah. is, is it seems like a yeah. lot of the emotes are basically slots for emotions of what happens for the streamer. So like sadness, joy, like pog champ, uh, mm -hmm. good luck, have fun. You have that one. A GG emote, we all have that. Well, those ones are really good because you can use them elsewhere. Yeah, and it, it does feel like a Pokédex a little bit in the mental feedback yeah. of. I see an emote, and I want to fill my Pokédex because it's useful in certain areas. And you have your slots of what you want to have, but yeah. Absolutely. You could calculate, so, hypothetically, the ROI on how much you pay the artist or the time it takes you to make the emote versus how much money you make in sub-revenue from someone who really wanted that. Yeah. And that's why they sub to you. And, and that's the thing is, I think you're highlighting something that we failed to highlight, which is if you can come up with something that's not oversaturated, but people want that they don't know that they want yet because they haven't seen the emote. Right? Yeah. It's like, that's the dream, right? Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. if it has wider appeal, like if it's maybe StarCraft related, but it doesn't have to be someone from StarCraft, then maybe you, you become that streamer. I, that's happened to me a few times with some of this stuff, but I try to mix it up like, I've got like, a, it, a quarter of my emotes are like my face in various ways, and then like, there's some like the GG emotes, and then you just throw in some random shit. Like I got a rank card emote kind of stuff. That's good. Your red card one gets used a lot. So yeah, yeah. Like red card is good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got you can use that's translatable. Yeah. It's yeah, it's easy. Like I haven't even like can think of the red card emote, and I, I still think yeah, that's that's good. I think it's kind of similar to multi TOS. Like when someone is breaking some rule, that's a way of indicating that kind of thing. Right. Hammer emote, yeah. axe emote. I feel like having a weapon, and then you have emote combos that you can create based on the set of stuff you find. Yeah. So like I like doing my angry face with the axe next to it. It yeah. kind of tells a bit of a story. You know what emote yeah. I saw that I really liked recently was like a speech bubble with like um, swearing basically just like <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the, the filter. That's swearing. fantastic because you, you can, can translate it into any other emote, right? Yeah. Stuff like that is great. Emotes. So how, how many of you actually like have themed emotes and, and like you pay someone? I only have six emotes. My own. So you got a new round of I, I tried I don't like them, man. I tried it. I tried a website called Fiverr. Just because I wanted to see what it was like. Like my buddy was telling me about it, and you can the price I paid, I think was like uh, five dollars per emote. So I was like, oh, I'll put twenty five bucks. I to try five, see how it goes. Yeah, it came out okay, but at, like after using them for like a couple weeks, um, there's like the chat is way too thin. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost not even readable if you're not like directly staring at the monitor. You know, like yeah. really close to it. And it, it, the, the graphic just could just be a little bit better. Like, I, it's, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Well, yeah. yeah. What I do is I offer a, I offer just like, I want an email like this, and then $25 Amazon gift card, whoever gets me what I use. And then mm -hmm. I, I just crowdsource. Well, that would work to see if it's extreme. There's one. Uh, you work with what you got. There's one discussion that I had with my chat recently, which was the dankness of meme is sometimes inversely proportionate to the quality, where sometimes if something <laughs> is kind of raw. Can we get and the bad, charts out here? It can like, be better. There's like an unca uncanny valley there. So a lot of my face emotes are like just this, where it's not a good picture of me, but it captures the emotion of like the I way my face is shaped. Those are pretty high quality, I think. Actually. Yeah, I'm high resolution. No, well, in that way they are, but it's not a good picture. So that's gonna be. Yeah, they're, they're great pictures. I, uh, <laughs> that's the point. That's what he said. No, no, no. Like I think what you, I thought what you were saying is, uh, like I, I, there was this Hearthstone streamer called Era that was in Root. And he had the worst emotes ever, but they were spam, you know, because they were so bad. Like he made them on paint, obviously. Uh, so one, just, one was just a yellow square. So he didn't even make the the round circle where the happy face goes. Uh, it's just like two dots and just like this crooked line. As well. Like obviously made on paint. It was terrible, but everyone was used to it, and, and his chat like spammed it so much. Like yeah, yeah, his emotes were like incredible. I think <laughs> someone was talking about Harding stream and his audio quality and how that's almost like a signature thing for him now, where it, it fits and it's cool and you go there and it has that like crackle when he tops oh, out. That's so bad. And then when he yells, it just gets into like a screechy like, yeah. oh my god, is my head taking a break? But that's like the flavor of a really strong whiskey that just burns. Oh yeah. But people want that. They want that kind of content. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, there's yeah, there's people for everything. I I used to be a lot more um, like just randomly spiky in emotion, so I just like yell out of nowhere. Yeah. And when that happened, like half like half the feedback was, uh, "Don't do that, my ears! Oh my god!" But yeah. there was always chat activity when that happened, right? And that's also important. Yeah. Um, and the other half, for every like, this person that company. turned off the string of ten people, are now like, "What's going on?" Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So. So we didn't cover how you s sustain your energy over a long broadcast. So if you're on for a while, what do you do to keep the steam going? I know you eat on stream more than almost anyone. <laughs> and you have like a third of your emos are food. So it's like food is a part of that process. She's not even eating that much. It's just like the same thing. Yeah, but really that's, that's easy on your digestive system. Yeah. Because it's always a little bit of process. It also increases your metabolism. True. Yeah. How often do you take drinks? I wasn't disagreeing. Once or twice a week, drink. For how long? Three minutes. Okay, Say take three break. minutes? So you don't take like a meal break? Well, that's why I eat on stream. So yeah. I don't take no breaks. Yeah. The whole day is a meal break. <laughs> I, I, always, I always take no breaks ever, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah, I usually, like, like, the only time I ever take breaks is if it's like something new came out and I'm like, we're doing a 24 hour stream and then I'll take a couple breaks because you have to at that point. But yeah. if it's like a solid six to eight hour stream, I almost never take a break. Mm -hmm. Me too, but I don't stream. I take, I take usually in like eight hours, usually seven, eight hours of StarCraft, like, Two or three, like few minute breaks. But what I always do, I have something else going on. Like I put a poll up, but should I be playing or casting when I come yeah. back? Something to anger people. If I do, that's what. Yeah. yeah, you gotta just something to keep them around. Like maybe I'll do a giveaway, and the giveaway is watching me more. But I don't know. <laughs> just something to anger people. What about you? I mean, I have yeah, short downtime with like setting up games and stuff, and mm -hmm. so a lot of people always complain like, oh my god, you're running like a two minute ad break. It actually is because if I have to cast all day, those two minutes actually do so much for me to be able to like just rest my voice a little bit, some solo cast, and then like yeah. reset and get ready to go again. I'm like set up the game and stuff, but mentally because I'm not paying attention to the stream for a moment or two, it kind of just all fits together as well because like it works to run an ad break then. And it's a different type of content, obviously to everyone else. Yeah, and so. that's that's a point that we haven't mentioned for you yet, which is you're a casting streamer, but you're solo casting the majority of the time, which means you talk twice as much as a duo cast. Yeah, and that's something I just got really used to. But as long as I take, and as long as I take like two minutes of break between every couple games or three minutes after a series, mm. I could talk all day. Like they're really good. Um, but I do notice that if I cast, like if I don't take breaks, that it actually does become a lot tougher, even like just mentally knowing that you're always on camera or something mm -hmm. in that time. So that's why it's one of the things I do, just the little breaks and you can learn ad revenue, you know, get some ad revenue in there as well. So it kind of works well for what I do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think like for a lot of streamers as well, like it just makes sense to sort of not take breaks and just to be like, just chill out on stream or like put something silly on while you grab something quick to eat or drink mm -hmm. because retaining your audience is kind of kind of tough if you just put like a break screen on. Yeah, there's a short attention yeah, span. Yeah. You want to like me, like this. Yeah, so it's like for me in the tournament, like people know the next game's coming up, right? Mm -hmm. So it has a bit more potency to like run an ad break. Yeah. But the problem is it really isn't that at all. Which is why I assume for everyone, like longer games are like grow your viewers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%, 100% yeah. they do. Yeah. 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 That's how I like making game tournaments, because people, yeah. I found in the beta, even though now it's just diamond players and the rest of the bracket, which is my MMR, of course. But, uh, yeah, that like people don't leave like they do at the end of a ladder game because mm -hmm. there's still a storyline even if it's like, well, does he actually win three games? Maybe right this is feedback that almost Blizzard should get, right? Like, yeah. Push oh, I, I pushed it, but yeah. like in-game tournaments and stuff. And that, yeah. Well, the thing, <laughs> the thing like that, that I had wanted with cool. in-game tournaments was just a best of three, where you just get a best of three mode, which oftentimes changes the way people formulate plans, where you're not just planning to beat a matchup once, you're planning to be able to beat a matchup three times. Which means you need to mix it up a little bit. It was weird how they added the tournament mode without that kind of thing. Because it's just like ladder, but even weirder. It, like it does gaps. create, yeah, but it does create the sense that there's more at stake. Like he's saying in a longer story, I agree that it's still the best Does one. it though? Well, in Warcraft 3, they did tournaments just the same. But there was like a prelim, uh, preliminary round in Warcraft 3, and then it turned into like a finals. And the finals was kind of like a tournament. Now. I guess you have group stages, which would be like a preliminary. But in Warcraft 3 back then, there was no like everyday Twitch tournament. Oh, I'm gonna watch different like uh, Elimina leagues or right. play hymns, things like that. Like those things kind of replaced 
what it was back then, but back then it was actually like the only way you could like be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I won this tournament, or it's like a prestigious way to like show off that you're good at the game. Sure. And the beta of StarCraft 2, it was the same. So yeah. I think if there was an incentive or something to force better players to play the tournaments, then sure, but right now it's just like... I agree with you. It's, it's literally, worse. a gold league player gives the right time to win the tournament. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it could be anybody. Yeah. You can go from like... Jadong to fucking somebody who yeah. just started playing the game. Right? And a lot, of, a lot of times you're like based off the timer of the tournament too, where it's like, oh, this guy didn't hit ready, so I'm gonna wait for 15 minutes. Oh yeah. And then so if I play so a game, I have to leave, so it's gonna be unranked. And if I don't play it, or if, if you do play the tournament game, you can win zero and lose like 50. It was just dumb. You know, Poke Bunny was like, we need 15 games to play in Challenger, and he was got a really high on Mars. He's like, fuck, I'm just gonna play in these 1v1 tournaments because I'm gonna kill up to like five unranked or like really low ranked players. He can never lose. Loses one game, and he's out. He's just completely out of Challenger. He lost 100 on Mar in one game. I was like, well, what was he trying to do? Oh my god. Uh, but he was trying to, you know, game the system, right? Because yeah. playing 15 players at the top ladder is really hard. Yeah, yeah. So How he's did like, he lose gonna, to a goal I don't, I don't know. I, was just, <laughs> I told him, though, I was like, if you lose one game, you're done, you're out. And he's like, I'm not going to lose a game. And he's like, fuck, I lost a game. He's just like, oh, he's oh, like, oh, like oh, so oh, 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 Well, back to the break question. My method is about every hour to two hours I get up and just move and then every fourth hour I have a food break that's about 15 to 20 minutes which does sacrifice some stuff but I'm hungry like I tell it really hard if I don't get enough food I used to smoke cigarettes I don't know if this is like the best advice <laughs> <laughs> I quit though but yeah it's, that was nice they, they do say <laughs> that breaks. sitting for long periods of time has a lot of uh, health problems associated with it yeah. So we're we're all kind of in the the danger zone of that. I like to stand up and like cast every like now and then, or like even if I'm just standing like leaning over the desk to collect and observe, mm. it's still kind of nice. But I try and do it as much as I can. Yeah. You know, like opening the window sometimes some fresh air. Hello. 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 If you want to say hi, Hello. we're on stream. We have three thousand seven hundred thirty-two viewers. We're talk I'll walk in, you'll lose about hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's all gone. Looks good. Thank you. I tried. He's so clean. Yeah, I guess now I have to come in. So we're talking off camera. Yeah. So we have one at the top. Apex, the map makers. I can't. Am I in frame? I can't tell. How many maps have you had on the ladder? Too many. Too many maps on the StarCraft Two ladder. He's over in the doorway, off this way. Got him. What was that? Blood boil. Oh yeah, I remember blood boil. Amber Invader. Her out there is blood names. Yeah, you might as well. Talk off camera. No, I'm weak. Why? Well, you could say hi. Zombie Brothers yeah. leaving StarCraft. Yeah. Zombie Brothers yeah. are like StarCraft. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to first wedding. Are we doing a StarCraft talk show? She's out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to interview someone not in StarCraft. That's a yikes. Just kidding. I didn't hear that. That's, that's expanding her brand. You're talking about. <laughs> I think you're doing Haja. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. You're doing streams stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah so, so the, the next question we had up was how do you deal with losing streaks and maintain your composure? Oh, you know. I don't lose composure. You just have a, a spare table next to your desk. Your desk is here. You have a table there, and you just flip it. For, honestly, for me, <laughs> whenever I start losing a lot, <coughs> I usually start blaming the chat. I'm like, guys, you just start banning. Yeah, I'm like, guys, it's your fault. It's your fault of losing. I'm just gonna stop reading the chat for like a couple games until I win and tell them I'm in a good mood again. And then we'll start reading chat again because mm. it actually kind of works. Because I you pick out a scapegoat. You're like, yeah, that that. Guy, look at this guy who wrote a paragraph. And you make, you want me to read that? Like it's way too long. And then he feels bad. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, okay, now I feel bad. Don't say sorry. It's actually not a big deal. Yeah. He but, spent three sentences telling you why workers are going against tanks. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Something like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's For me, I just play through it. I don't take breaks. Yeah. I think the, it's weird, but like for me, if I win, I can easily be like, I'm just going to take like 10 minutes here. We're going to read the chat. I don't really mind. Let's, let's hang out, guys. But if I lose, I'm like, I have to queue again. I queue again. It's like addictive. You I, ha queue. Like, I have to queue again if yeah. I lose. I, and if I lose more, I don't like, I'm just like, but, like, just, like, like <laughs> 10 times instead of once. Like, I have to play again if I lose. So, yeah. if we can uh, inject some judgment and decision making into that, that phenomenon is you become risk seeking when you have less. Because you're getting close to zero, it doesn't feel like you have that much to lose. So, so you just, yeah, you just throw it onto the table. As opposed to if you win a lot, you go, it's called winner's tilt, where you want to keep that high on Marn and end on a good note. Yeah, that's right. Thank God I'm lost, but I'll say you're on a roll if you're winning. No. <laughs> so, what do you do with you? A decent amount of overlap with. Uh, with Vibe to touch on a different topic within the same realm is uh, when I'm on a losing streak because my stream is
very much about like um, reasoning and, and like trying to provide reasoning to people. I feel like it takes away from the things that I've been saying because people don't necessarily, like not everyone necessarily understands what I'm saying on the merit of, of the logic behind it, but you know, like there has to be some Probably like a win range. behind it when you, yeah. you, you finish, yeah. it's like win, like see? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so when you lose like five times in a row, you're worried that all those people are gonna think, you know, you're just bullshitting. Yeah. Um, so for me, what I do when I lose a lot, it's not that I ever feel bad or I feel on a personal basis, but I'm worried about diluting um, my brand as far as like what people think, like how people perceive me as insightful or not, right? So what I usually do is I switch on to try hard and I ask people in my chat, like, hey, can, like do you guys want to go try hard for like five games? Mm -hmm. And then I don't do commentary and then I don't do anything and put a penny on this try hard. And I hopefully win more than I lose, right? Um, and then if I lose all those five games, I don't know, I'm just like, okay guys, I don't know, like, I'm just done. Like, <laughs> What do you do? I have a, like, like people don't expect me to be, like, winning every game. Like, I, I'm constantly saying, like, I'll misclick my C, so you'll be like, yeah, I just really suck at this game. I don't know. But when I lose a lot of the time, especially from feeling, because you know when you're not playing well. Even if, like, you win, you're like, oh, I didn't really deserve that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I have a lot of different segments. Like, I have a lot of casting of, like, lower level games or the, the angry coach type of thing. So, like, pe there are some people, like, can tell, like, I'm not really into the ladder. They'll just throw their replay and be like, yeah, check this out. And I'll just yell at them because they play way worse than me. And that's good. To, like, if I'm not feeling it, and I, if I feel like I'm playing well but I'm losing, I'll play 15, 20 games in a row. But yeah. that's pretty rare where I have that streak. So I have other content to mix it up. So that's a little different than if you so rely on basically, when you start losing, you pull people's replays and make fun of them. Yes. That's good. genius. Thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I, I sometimes escape to a different game. And I think that's like doing brand as well. But yeah. a lot of why I stream these days is just to um, keep in good company. Like I like the chat. I actually like talking to the people there. Yeah. Um, so you know, if there's enough people there, I just what? I, 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 I like my, my, I like my chat's chat. not listening. It's okay, buddy. No, I like my chat. Oh, okay. I like my chat. Really? I guess fun. Yeah. yeah, like if you have like the regulars, some some yeah. of them are really fun to hang out with. Like just yeah. talk to because they say no. really fun yeah. stuff. Like I have. Yeah. You I hear that awesome regulars? We appreciate you. Yeah. Some of them are watching right now. So, <laughs> my losing streak method, if it gets really bad, if it gets really bad, not just like losing four, but if I lose seven to ten, Rocky theme, play that, do 50, 50 push ups. I'm not joking. 50 push ups. And then, and then listen, this is important. And then listen to Eye of the Tiger after that. And at that point, 50 push ups? Yeah. Get a pull up bar? Yeah. Do that. Let me tell you a push-up story. Uh, I did. Of so course, Harstam, a story. Harstam hosted me for 500 viewers, oh. and I was doing 10 push-ups per sub, so I said, I'll do 50 for you. It's but I forgot to change my scene to my push-up push cam, oh. so it's just off-cam, and you're like, we don't even know if you did them. Oh, no. So I had to do them again. Oh, no. Is it 100? Yeah. Oh, gee. That's yeah. rough. So people have, like, a dog cam with a push-up cam? They're the same thing, because the dog can go up. There's also a dog. Yeah, that, that is also a dog. Yeah. yeah, but emotionally speaking, and a lot of people ask me this, is do you not get angry? Do you not experience emotion? I think <laughs> every, everyone has to let it out at some point. Sometimes you can delay it, where you feel really emotional and you grip that until you're off camera and it goes somewhere. But it needs to go somewhere. You can't just snap that and then is. suddenly you're not tilted anymore. <laughs> that would be nice. I just find that one guy in chat that deserves it. <laughs> yeah, take the scapegoat. The best thing is if you do this a lot, like you take it out on that one guy that you don't really want in your chat anyways, people that want to be in your chat won't know what, like, they know, right? Yeah. They know, like, if you, if you fuck with me, like, I will fuck with you. You gang up on them? Right. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, I don't know, my chat is, like, very much like, oh, everyone I like to have there, and then there's that one guy that I don't like. And I get rid of him. When you, when you yeah. do it, though, if you ban, like I say, someone's annoying you, and you ban them, do you do it in, like, an angry way? Yeah. Where it's yeah. like, yeah. get out of my chat, I don't, yeah. don't ever come back, you're no, annoying. Because yeah. yeah. I feel like if you, if you do that, like, but you do it in a way that makes it a joke out of it. Well, I, make it way, I make it as like entertaining as fun. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Like, yeah. I don't mind. But also out of anger. You yeah, just like, I was saying, if you just like rage, but like, it is right though. It's true. Like, for example, <laughs> like, some guy is like, <laughs> <laughs> some guy's trying to tell me, like, I'm doing the wrong build or something, I'm like, no, I'm not. And then, like, and he'll like continue, continue, continue. I'm like, all right, I told you I'm not, like, 
go fucking tell Winter how to play or something. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's if you came and did that, it'd be a hard dilemma for me. Yeah, it's something that's hard. hard. <laughs> I think that's something it's hard to do with, like, the, as, 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 like, a streamer for the game, especially if you're, like, consistently doing it all the time. Mm. Because I'll get people who, like, you know, obviously everyone who streams gets people that tell them how to play all the time, and then uh, I'll have plenty of people that will say things like, they'll come to my chat and be like, I can't believe I just got banned from so and so stream because I never heard of play. Right. And then they proceed like 10 minutes later, do you should really be doing this? The smarter ones are sugar cut. Yeah, I'm just like, like, uh, like if you, usually it would, I would say. I just made some suggestions. Yeah, yeah. It usually doesn't bother me, but like if you have that tilt session, it definitely. It bothers me point. because usually it's it's after I've lost. It's, that's all and I know exactly why the fuck I've lost. Yeah. It's like, I'm not dumb. It's like, Oh, he just, what did he do? Like, I have no idea what happened, yeah. you know? It's like, either I made a mistake and I already know what it is, and then there's some guy's like, why are you creep spread better? No, I know. That's not why I fucking died. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what's really part about One it. One thing that I would use as a kind of reference for this is everyone has an emotional buffer for their day. You have like a reservoir, and then every time you lose and you get frustrated, it goes down a little bit. Every time you have difficulty in a chat, it goes down a little bit. Yeah, but then so. when you ban that one guy, it goes back up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so you just ban it until your yeah. emotional buffer is You just go back up. I, I think that Steven touched on this too, like everyone's a little bit different, right? Like he was saying, for example, you need like thick skin basically if you are to like interact with things like Reddit and stuff, like it would be a little bit sociopathic even, right? Like where you don't actually take the feedback um, in a way that it's just like harmful to you, right? So I like to think I have pretty good emotional restraint. I think I'm a pretty emotional person, mm -hmm. um, but also like, where you allocate that matters. So like for example, if I'm actively trying to improve in StarCraft, then loses hurt way more. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not actively trying to improve yeah, in StarCraft, right. like I don't really care if I lose that much. Yeah. Right. So I care for the perception of what people might think, like like what I was saying earlier, like they might think, oh, like he's not qualified to give an advice because they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't know me or they don't know like uh, that my advice could or, or might be sound right. Um, so yeah, like I think I think it varies for sure, like person to person, and even within people, the level of caring or something. Yeah, you could also say it's your nature, so your natural reservoir, and then also your starting mood. So when you push the go live button, what state are you working? This with? is why I don't have like a schedule. Like this will be the day where I do coaching type of stuff or something like that, because maybe I'm just having a mood that day. Like yeah. the idea is like you might get any of these things, and they're all high enough quality. You'll come watch, but. Yeah, I think if you do that, that that's how you get that lower stand, like reservoir of tolerance for whatever yeah. could go wrong and everything. Uh, some, something's gonna go wrong. At some point. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really important too. Like for example, we talk about consistency. I talk about like, ha having a schedule is most most beneficial, right? Like because people expect consistency. Mm -hmm. But what Winter is saying, like I'm on the same boat. Like it's just like I personally really struggle with schedule. I really struggle with consistency. Because um, I just get bored of schedule and stuff like that. Like I want to be a little bit more free, and that's just part of how I am. Mm -hmm. I, um, so sometimes, if you can just like identify how you are and adapt to it, that's that's you know as close to the best solution as you can get. Well, kind of to Destiny's point earlier, your practices should be ones that you can sustain over time. Yes. That don't put you in a bad spot. So it means that you basically need to find your own path forward, mm -hmm. rather than if someone says, "Well, scheduling is better." If scheduling makes you hate your job. You right. should not do that. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like scheduling wouldn't feel as like tedious uh, as it sometimes can, I guess. Because mm. like I'm someone who, when I started streaming, I never had a schedule, but I, for the last like three years, I've had one. And at first, I hated it, but then after maybe like two months, I stopped caring, and I was like, oh, this is part of my routine now. I just got used to it, and I, mm. I've never really cared since then. Mm. But I feel like it wouldn't really feel <clears throat> as difficult to do all the time, I guess, if there was like more content available. Because it feels like, as like a streamer, especially in a game like StarCraft, you, sometimes you can feel like you're doing like the same thing all the time. Like it's just like, oh well. It's that gasless play. It's the gasless play. <laughs> it's, it's just like, all right, we're going gasses, Protoss, let's do it. We got it mapped out. Uh, it's, but you're like, it's like, you know, you're playing ladder, yeah. ladder, ladder. And it's just a lot of ladder games. Whereas other franchises, other games, you might have more, you know, like, a game coming out like every three years, let's say. It just that feeling of like new and fresh. Yeah. Like and like again, I'm just gonna go back to like Warcraft 4. If Warcraft 4 came out like today, I would have no problem having the eight hour a day schedule because I would actually want to play like fifteen hours a day. Yeah. I would have that massively addictive feeling. Yeah. So it's you get that I guess like burnt out feeling where you're like, oh well, I'm still gonna play it every day because I like the game better than the alternatives, but I've been doing it for so long that schedule can now feel more like a job 
than just like an addiction. Mm -hmm. This is another reason why I feel the Blizzard big balance changes are very important. That's, I think so too. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. it changes we're, we're trying to get to a point where we're, we're just out of balance peak or whatever, where it's like 50, 50, whatever the fuck. Yeah. I know it doesn't, but if we are trying to get to that point, mm -hmm. it'll get really stale. Yeah, it will. All the games will start becoming really standard. Yeah. And this guy it's just totally. So forward on that <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really fun. But when we have like these big balance shifts, for example, I think the most excited I've been to play the game recently was when we did the mothership change, the mothership yeah. core removal. Yeah. Once that patch came out, I'm like, let's go. This is <laughs> yeah. It's fun, yeah. like, really yeah. 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 So, so touch on this, so this, this is like, relevant. once that patch came out, he was like, let's go. On this, uh, on this particular topic, I think that there's, like on everything, there's like two types of people, right? It's just, we're talking about a single range. In this, in this case, that range is change versus not change and how, how receptive people are to it. Mm -hmm. So there's people that aren't receptive to change, that if you change something on them, they're like, whoa, like no, like why did I just spend all the time, yeah, yeah. all this time like working on this and then I was getting good at it and now you're changing it. Right, and then there's people who are like, I want to explore stuff, I want to try new stuff, I want to think about stuff actively rather than just doing stuff robotically. Um, and I think that's most of us in this room. So this ties into the next point. By the way, we have like 10 minutes or so left. Cool, cool. But um, expanding your stream to other games. So we all have the common thread in StarCraft. What other stuff do you play? And to give you an easy question, Percentage-wise, StarCraft to other games, what is your ratio? Oh, I'm probably the least <laughs> ratio here, considering I do a lot of variety and art. Um, That's not um, happening. Mm, I would say that my my usual schedule would be five hours of StarCraft and four hours of something else mm -hmm. every day. So I usually go for probably an average of eight to ten hours, mm -hmm. and uh, with the one day off a week. Mm -hmm. But I used to do one day entirely of creative, mm -hmm. but um, my arm hurts when you pay for that one. So then I, <laughs> I then divided that one creative day up as well to do half a day creative and then half a day of variety. Mm -hmm. so I, thought, I guess what's that then? Like 70%? 65%? Yeah. So it's yeah. For me, it's a bit, uh, it took me like a process to learn uh, like what my audience likes. Because what I think my audience likes is not what my audience likes. Mm -hmm. and, no, for real. Like I, I thought. Even if they say they don't. Like, well, they're all. And whenever I say this to them, they're like, I get like the five guys who are like, I'll watch you with whatever you play, man. You play anything, I'll watch. I'm like, thanks, but I like know my stats. They tell me everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, like for me, it was whenever I would play other games, and I would be on Discord with my friends, I would focus ninety percent of my attention on talking to them. And like ten percent of my attention on being like, hey chat, how's it going? And then I would like I would just see over time being like, holy shit, like the chat hasn't moved in twenty seven minutes. Like what is anyone still there? And they're like, hey, 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 I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then it just again it just, yeah, just falls off. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It just like falls off. But for me the the best success I've had on my stream that's not StarCraft was when I went through a period of time where I was doing like fifty fifty. I'd do like four or five hours of um, Starcraft followed by like four or five hours of something else, and it was always when I was doing something that was like, I guess, quote unquote, noteworthy, where I'd be like, all right, guys, a new season of D3's out, and I'm gonna push rank one. Yeah. And when I would be in that situation where I'm like one of the few streamers that streams hardcore, and I'm pushing like uh, the rank one spot on like day two, where it's like, oh, he's probably gonna die, let's watch him die, because yeah. it's gonna happen, and then I'm like, it's like, Poosh, you just hit rank one or whatever, and then, when I look at my stream, it's like a similar feeling to when like you are streaming StarCraft, you had that like 45 minute game and you're like, holy crap, during that Rift run, my viewers just like doubled, it yeah. seemed like, or like it's like 30% higher because of that. Yeah. So if I'm doing something like, yeah, like it, I'm super into it when I'm doing it because it's like, it's super intense and if I like, I could die at any point. Mm -hmm. So things like that, it went really well, but if I was just like, hey, let's just try this game, it would always decline. Yeah, the thing that I feel like is hard, especially for us, if we're established by StarCraft skill, like all of us are high skill at StarCraft, relative to the viewership. But if we play another <coughs> game, well, some people would call GMs bad, like NAGM is notoriously bad. If people don't know, right, that's, that's a joke. That's not very many viewers you're appealing to. <laughs> yeah, EU is better than NA, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, whenever we switch to a new game, if you want to be successful at that, you have to think about why those viewers would watch you as opposed to why your regulars are watching you. They're already watching you. So you're losing the StarCraft loyalists, so how do you gain the loyalists of that game? So like you're saying, you do something noteworthy. 
Yeah. I, I try to do something that's like niche, where yeah. not a lot of people are doing it. Yeah. And then it's re and the, it, the reason why it's niche is because it's harder. Yeah. And then you see if it works. I think you have to though. You dig. You want to keep your. Like, if you're gonna go from like one of the best StarCraft two players to like, okay, I'm like gonna go play League of Legends. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> everyone's gonna be like, why, why, why am I I'm here? Silver like, you don't watch one of the best League of Legends players. Like, sure, I love buy a chill, sweet dude guy. Find a chill, sweet dude guy. <laughs> That's true. What's your ratio? Like, I, I've actually, just in the last probably few months, I've kind of allowed myself to really dive in. And it's the same thing. Like, you can't just casually do a couple hours. But the game I've really gotten into, especially recently, is Planet Side 2. I only play games that died in 2015. <laughs> 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 but uh, Planet Side 2 is an MMO FPS, so it's the exact di opposite experience of StarCraft, where I can have, what, what's the max? Realistically, like seven fans in a game. Mm -hmm. Past that, it's out of hand. Planet Side 2, I can have 47 other people on voice chat oh, cool. that never are able to interact with me personally, right. or on the same level as StarCraft. But it's essentially, it's also kind of a strategy game, because it's such a large game. Mm -hmm. So you have the, the partially strategy aspect, and you can have that potential interaction not just like if I'm playing Hearthstone and I'm interacting, but you are there in the game with me. With your and subs, I enjoy it. Right Not just that, like okay. anyone who wants to get in, it's free to play games. So. Cool. Yeah, that's that's been a lot of fun. And I've, I've got, well, I let myself get into games, like Slay the Spire I played for a while. I go back to that sometime. Rocket League. But I don't like, I like I play Black Ops for two hours, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. And I like stuff like that. So I think my ratio right now is about 70 to 75 uh, StarCraft, and mm -hmm. then I'm letting myself have like that quarter of others. It makes it, my philosophy is StarCraft Two is my job, but I'm allowing myself to have hobbies now. So yeah. that's been very, I guess, healthy for me. Mm -hmm. I just need to tone down the total time and I'll be good. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> what about you? I mean, I mostly do StarCraft, but if I'm enjoying another game, then I really, I do try and stream, but I've been playing a lot of Battle Royals, and I think the biggest thing that was successful there was that I streamed it with like Nathaniel or Rick, you know, people mm -hmm. in the StarCraft community, right? Yeah. Which is like what a bunch of us did when we were playing PUBG and Fortnite and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that goes pretty well because people like seeing the StarCraft community in another like position or in another yeah. way and well, you know, all of that sort of stuff. But then sometimes like when I play those games, like, I don't want the stress of streaming on me as well. So yeah. I haven't done that as much lately. Um, well, I did do that and there's a risk of that, you're losing brand too. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's always that thing like if you like stop doing too much of it, you're like, do you ever play StarCraft? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, but now you can see I do it, man. Like, but yeah, it's um, you don't want to do it too much, and it's kind of weird. But I have been doing a lot of marbles, which is um, a pretty <laughs> solid, pretty solid viewer interaction game, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Mm -hmm. But people love it, so I do like. Nowadays, usually if I'm doing a tournament without stream delay, mm -hmm. if the tournament's like five or six hours, I'll probably do like three or four hours of marbles afterwards, mm -hmm. just because my chat won't let me stop. Yeah. But with other people, it's good. You haven't heard of Marvel. And you, among all of us, have oh, you you successfully like entrenched another community of my two. So, I don't know you, you retain a good viewership with a uh, secondary game. Okay, I, I think I think I have an issue with uh, that that's been recurring, right? Because I'm like, yeah, consistency is the most important thing, but that's not me. <laughs> you know, like, do it, but I can't do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that happens to me a lot. Where I'm just like, I'm just kind of doing what I want rather than actively trying to grow my brand a lot of the time. Um, and that's just from a place of comfort. Like I, I, I can afford to do that. I feel like I do other things outside of uh, streaming, and um, and that just lets me play what I want. Like, so what happens to me most often is I go into a different game, like Dota 2 per se, right? And I play Dota 2 for like two months, and I'm really into it. And then I'm just bored. Yeah. And so like right now I just got bored of Dota 2. And it's like I build an audience, which, which is like the sad part is like now I play StarCraft and people are like, what time is Dota? And I'm, and, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Right? And then the same thing happened with Hearthstone. Like I started playing Hearthstone. I wanted to get Legend with my own decks. I got Legend in like, you know, a couple months and I was done. Yeah. Um, and this, um, now I'm looking into Artifact and I really want to be good at Artifact. But if the patterns are you yeah. know, a measure of what's gonna happen, I'm probably gonna be bored soon. Mm -hmm. And the only recurring game that, that I have is StarCraft. Um, and that's why it's just the most fruitful for me, like as far as viewership is concerned. Mm -hmm. If I stream StarCraft for long enough, then my viewership will consistently go up. But I just don't, uh, I just don't, yeah. I think it's bad to dilute your brand, honestly, like unless you're gonna stick with something for a little while. Yeah. Yeah.
because people need to know what they're going to your stream for. Um, and out of all things that I've tried, the one that was picking up the fastest and was maybe the most successful was uh, a second, uh, segment called Not Philosophy that I was using, yeah, yeah. where we were just, you know, randomly talk about stuff. I think you were in it at one point, and you were definitely in it at one point. Yeah. Um, and just have interesting, you know, intellectual conversation on stream, that, that was really fun, but then, you know, that kind of touches on a, a good conclusion point because you're a little bit over yeah, your time. But I only oh, did StarCraft, by the way. 100%? Bless, bless you, Except for Realm or Realm Royale. Realm Royale. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. I played a PUBG game. I saw you play PUBG. Okay, one PUBG game. Yeah, what about, so what about PUBG? PUBG? If we're going by percentage time, 99 point oh. something percent StarCraft. That's not hard when you just dream out. Hmm? Yeah, you just dream for like an hour a month. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Yeah. So hey, hey, dude. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey man, how you doing? Just yeah, the entire right. Hello. Right. Oh, we're done? Yeah. What the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> the battery's got 20 minutes. 46, not it's 6. still on. <laughs> okay. Well, shit. I guess I've got a yellow port for uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? So it's been good. The It's a wrapping. We had this series of questions. I don't know if you saw the question. But I did. No, no. If you want to come in frame, you can say hello to everyone. We have 3,300 people. Good day, mates. Hello. Mm -hmm. So we talked about a whole range of stuff. One of the themes that's connected to what we were just talking about is streaming stuff that you're excited about because that makes your channel really watchable because yeah. you're you're thrilled yeah, to be doing what you're doing. And that's a lot more infectious for the viewer than if you're like, well, gotta do my job again, gotta play some more ladder games. It's not fun, like, it's kinda sad. But if you can switch a game, even if it's not the game that they would want, you can impose your personality on that and make something really rich and engaging. I think Destiny did a great job at that, right? And he talked about it a little bit, like just like makes the stream last his personality more than the game that he plays. I saw that with your transition from StarCraft to Dota, which, where there was a point where it's like, uh, I'm not really enjoying StarCraft right now, and if you switch to Dota, the viewership is going to be lower, but you got really excited. And it gets it was really fun to watch you ramp up your skill in that game. Thank you. Sweet. Sweet. So this is the, is there anything you want to say? So, TLDR, mm -hmm. Maynard is amazing. He'll be casting BlizzCon this weekend. Thank you, friends. He's got that, that metal vibe with his stream. Is there any advice you would give to an up and coming streamer? Uh, it's very cliche, but do it because you love it, not because you want to get paid. Otherwise it won't last. Amen. Yeah, I feel like multiple years of streaming before it's anywhere close to level up in most so, cases. Yeah, I mean, some people have, uh, like when I started my stream, I got partnered pretty quick because I had that whole, like, people twitching who I was, it was already casting, you know, there was uh, some popularity yeah, right, from casting, that sort of thing, so it was a lot easier, but if you're starting from zero, mm -hmm. you, to not be deterred by it, you have to love it, mm -hmm. keep going. So be extroverted to a degree, right? Like, that's almost a requirement. At least pretend to be. Extroverted? Uh, I, I don't think, think if you're introverted, you're not gonna love the crowd. And I also think that you shouldn't pretend that you shouldn't pretend like, I mean, you know, I'm sure you're kidding. I'm not serious. I thought it was you that, that you should pretend introverted just means you're going to be out going. Recharge your energy. You can turn up your... You can turn it up, yeah. It, I would say it is a different social situation having viewership than being in a room with people. It is. Uh, sure, it is. It can be a good training. I mean, you can do it because you like the training if you're introverted, right? Like, just yeah. to try and... Well, I would consider myself extremely introverted. Really? Yeah. Extremely mm -hmm. introverted. Yeah. I don't know I what don't I would say. I, don't, I would say there's a difference between. <laughs> but, there's a, but, there's a, but, there's a, but then I see you at parties with you. Sure. Yeah. 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 There's a difference anywhere. between being sociable and being introverted. Yeah. Like you can enjoy people's company, but you can also expend a lot of energy being. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Rather than getting energy off being around people, you expend the energy being around people. Yeah. Do you, not, do you not get drained then as an introvert? Do you not get drained by the chat at all? Or? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. So they are still people even if they're Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you still expend a lot of energy from the chat. But I feel like it's a lesser degree. Like, like I turn, turn off the stream and I don't talk to people until so like break people are the next stream. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. So you're introverted as well. Yeah, like yeah. like going to an event, I'm not gonna like go out of that house like a month. Alright. Because sure. <laughs> so, oh. you gotta recharge your back. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think Steven is actually introverted. Yeah. Yeah, he goes. Yeah. But I'm wrong. I don't think you need to be introverted. How's bad? Well, I would say I'm probably like fifty five percent extroverted. I'm very yeah, I'm very extroverted as well. Yeah. Because I, I do well with solitude, but I'm also not really pressed if I'm in a group of people. Yeah. 
play up the showmanship. Charisma. Uh, charisma. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. They're not kicking us out of the room, so I don't know if we want to, like, keep going until they kick us out. I kind of do we kick it? Unless they're going to charge me more money. <laughs> I have, I have let's, a, let's not do that. I have a lady, have a lady waiting on well, we will call it a stream here. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Yeah. All of yeah, the yeah, social right. media Where's links for everyone is in the, the notes. So go check that out. Bye. Bye. We love and appreciate you. Good luck. Have fun. Never give up. Believe in yourselves. Do what you can. Follow all of us if you want to. You're going to see Kiwi right now. I don't know. Yeah. But what? And. 